lizard in a woman's skin. In fact, it's only since you arrived here that funny things have been going on. I'll break you! Unbearable suspense that keeps you on the edge of an abyss of terror. Kill, please. I'm going completely mad. There's only one thing I can tell you. I didn't kill her. Yes, yes, y'all, it's going down right now. Episode 229 of the Triple Shots of Moods and Horror Podcast is coming at you live and direct with the homies, JP, also known as Double Shot J, Dave, George Eastman Parker, also known as the Grumpy Old Bitch, and back in the studio is one of our extended family members, the one and only Dave to the Zia later with the mad flavor. What's going on, homies? Gia. Yo! What's up, boys? Italian Horror Month, week number one. Here we are. Lucio Fulci. You got an Italian on the show. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I didn't even think of that. That actually makes complete sense, doesn't it? Maybe you've that should a, be a new. You've rule. done a few of these with us. I know you've done. You actually were. On, were you on Fulci? The first he was on two Argentos. Just Argento. Oh, you were on two Argentos. Yeah, no, I think two he just did Argentos. Was Fulci? Maybe three. I don't know. Was Fulci part of the first Italian Horror Month? Yes, we did Fulci the first year with. Uh, what was it? Um, was it Gates of Hell? Gates of Hell? You did Beyond Gates of Hell and House by the Cemetery, I'm sure. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, and then like we that, did yeah. him again. I, I want to say, I don't know if it was the second year or the third year, but it was uh, Zombie New York, New York Ripper? Ripper and Cat yeah. in the Brain. I think Brandon was on that one. So, That's where the bad worm. So this is the third from. Fulci show? <laughs> Yeah, this is the third. Oh, shit, show. man. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did one back to back. That's right. That's right. That's right. Before we got creative and just started doing like no name Italian directors and shit like that and pissing off everybody. I, I don't think that creative is the right term for that. <laughs> the what's that? <laughs> that was Jeremy. I, said, I don't mostly. think creative is the right term for that. That was Jeremy. He's like, I want to find the worst director I can find. His name is uh, Alberto Lasagna. Well, it's like he directed two commercials like, and one scary because it has a ghost in it. To be honest, man, <laughs> it was thinking outside the box. And and I mean, that's something that our show, we've, we've always kind of done. And that's something that we've been praised for over the last 10 years of doing the show is that we don't just review the typical bullshit. So I didn't mind, yeah, you know, flipping in some of these like... Activity. You know, Tokyo Roberto Night. fucking Roberto Lasagna <laughs> and stuff like that. I don't mind doing those guys every once in a while. I mean, most of the time, most of the time, the shows are relatively good. I mean, I remember Dave, he was like, I didn't, I didn't even know who Antonio Margaretti was. And I'm like, really? But like, to me, me? I know, I know who he was. Uh, me. Right. No, Probably Everybody, me. Yeah. You know, he, yeah, I was he, like, Antonio Margaretti, if I could see like 30 of that guy's movies. <laughs> right. And that's what I'm saying. Right. So, you know, he's well known to us and stuff, but some people hadn't heard of him and you get it out there, but he does have decent good films. Right. So that's, you know, what no, I like. Margaretti's those good. Type of yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we did do some of the, the Alberto Martinos and the fucking, uh, the Garonis and oh my God. Garonis got Garoni equal garbage. Yeah. Martino's good. That was actually kind I of a joke because I knew that you were going to be on it. And I was like, I know Dave fuck is going to hate these movies and this is going to actually be fun. But I, I mean, I read like two of them in the last month and I was like, I ain't more watching these Garoni movies. Garoni's a jabroni, bro. I'm out. Right. <laughs> right. There are still a few um, like decent guys who have made a couple of decent movies that we haven't got to yet. Yeah, we haven't done your Coley uh, yet. We haven't done your Coley. He's got three really good movies. Uh, uh-huh. We haven't done a Poopy of Ate. A party, the one that we should have done. Right. This time. Yeah, we haven't done I was actually thinking about He was the one I was considering before I decided to go with Falchi. Mm-hmm. So, the, yeah, but there's a, there's still a Ercoli. couple of guys. There's a lot of people who did, like, two. Right. But not a third one. 
Right. Oh, uh, like, did you guys? You guys did Massimo Dallamano, didn't you? Yeah, that was yeah, one of my picks. I was gonna pick your Coley this year. That was actually originally my pick, and then I was like, oh, okay, I'll try something different. But so. he did the Death Walks on High Heels and Death Walks at Midnight, right? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, like what's his name? E. Coli. E. Coler. E. Coler. E. Coler. E. Coler. E. Coler. No, his really name is Ecto Cooler. Ecto Cooler, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, Italian man, names, I, Italian I names like are all so similar ghost. but so different. It's so annoying in their names, man. <laughs> They're all very similar. Why uh, your video on? But yeah. you trying to just fuck this call. Up? Mm-hmm. But I'm excited. I'm excited, man. Italian Horror Month is back, and it seemed like you know the the response was there. People were really excited that it was back. Um, it came so quick because we started out with the Halloween show, and then it was like bang into into Italian. So. Yeah, I was in Duncan's group, and uh, Duncan just made a post like, what is everybody watching this week or whatever? And somebody was like, well, it's Italian Horror Month, so I'm watching Italian Horror Movies. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I know. I like how you always post yeah. that on people. And pe- some people are like, what the fuck is Italian Horror Month? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> whatever. You'll catch it's on funny. one day. You'll catch on one day. Like, what, what year is this? Like, how many volumes have I we done? I think eighth. This is the eighth one. So we've been doing this for fucking eight, well, at least eight yeah, years. Yeah, because this actual November, at the end of the month, will be our 10 year anniversary. It's insane. Right. I think we did, I don't think we did Italian month the first two years. I couldn't remember. But it might have been just the first year. This might be the ninth one. I, I, that's sure. what I was thinking because I asked, I asked you if it was the eighth or ninth. I couldn't remember because I know we didn't do it the first year because we hadn't come Well, up it was always easy when we had Argento. We did an Argento every year, mm-hmm. so I would be like, "Oh, this is Argento Volume Seven. This is the seventh year." <laughs> yeah, we're actually probably going to be able to do another Argento show soon. He keeps pumping up yeah. his movies. Yeah. Holy shit, man! Yeah. Like, I hope so. What the fuck's up with that? I'm eh? like crazy. So yeah, that's that's so cool, though. I probably mean, I think we all watched Black Glasses and we all liked it. A we lot. all liked it. I know, and you know, this year for myself, I know Dave has got a completely different perspective on 2022 he seems to be having a fucking jolly old good time with the year this year yeah you mentioned that you mentioned that last show i was gonna weigh in on it i want to know uh yeah. that's, that's wild because I'm, I'm doing pretty good here i'm close to i'm maybe just under 50 watches for the year which is very very low for me um i just been having problems finding things that i'm really interested in watching and stuff and, and you know i have seen some good ones recently but overall from the 50 films I've watched, it's been pretty lackluster and stuff. Like, I just don't feel real confident on making a real top shelf type top 10 list for the year end as of right now. I'm sure there'll be some other films, but the big, one of the biggest shockers for me this year is, is the Argento film, Dark Glasses. Like, you know, I, I, I think like all of us were a little bit skeptical on going into it, considering the product that he's put out in the last few years. I shouldn't say last few, like the last 15 years or whatever. And uh, this one was, I made the joke. I think I finished the movie and I said to myself, I'm like, that movie had better production than the last four or five movies combined. Like, it kind of shows you how bad the Italian filmmaking world was when he made those movies. You kind of think maybe it really wasn't his fault. Maybe it was just the fucking surroundings and the, the budgets and just how they were making movies at the right. time was and then, shit. and then that makes you think about other directors too. And sure. it makes you think that the times change and like how films are made change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do what they want. I think a lot of that factors into like the, you know, Carpenter's last couple and, mm-hmm. and Craven's Romero. last couple and shit. Romero and Carpenter. Craven was always on even though. Craven was very uneven all the time. No, oh, he was. Yeah, he he was the definition. But he of hit took and miss. a lot of jobs that just for the job as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 for sure. Carpenter did too. Doing though, a like, Jalo is easier though, I think, for somebody what? like like I think doing a movie is easier than trying to make a regular horror. Like for for a well, John Argento, Carpenter, Argento, it's very easy. That's all he yeah, knows. That's all he Argento does. He's not, very vers- not a very versatile guy. Let's be honest. Yeah, true. But yeah, that, that, that a Jalo is easier. Than a supernatural movie, you know. Um, I mean, he does supernatural movies too, but they all have well, jealous yeah, but touches. Mm. Look at like Carpenter's last stuff, and look at the all the greats and the last things they they did. They were just I don't want to say that they were director for hire, but those are the kind of movies that anybody could have done. Well, the so I think the difference was. here is. Are Geno doing a giallo? It's easy for him. Yeah, yeah, it's second nature. Well, to that's, I mean, but, but that's the way his brain works. He's also giallos too. Like, no, not Dracula 3D. Ah. No, <laughs> not that one. But, but that's just the know, way his mind player, really works, though. I mean, he's and been writing Hitchcock and giallo. Yeah, right. And I haven't seen it yet, so it's going to be one of mine towards the end. I saved two or three for the end, what? and that's one of them. Yeah, there's a lot yet? of stuff in there that's reminiscent no, of early Argento. Like, no, you'll like it. 
I, I better like it. Well, I have, especially never especially not if him. you like the last couple, because I know you you were even kind of in the minority with some of his latest work that you liked. I couldn't see you yeah. disliking this movie. I yeah, if, if you like shallow and you hate dark glasses, you need to get your head examined. Yeah, dude. dude like no, this one is I'll worlds like better. Yeah. You'll like it. You'll like it. It's good. See, that's why I'm saving it. Like, there's three movies that I'm saving: the sadness. Uh, Dark Glasses and um, the Black Phone, mostly because Sadness and Black and in Black Phone have been um, I don't want to say universally loved, but I haven't heard any really Pretty too much. many negative things about them. So what I like to do is towards the end, I like to save a few for the end, so I kind of go out on a high note. I like do right the same now, thing. I'm saving see? the sadness as well. Yeah, yeah. there you go. I'm well, doing that's... some obscure things now, and because the, they're going to be hit or miss. And by the way, I looked at my list right now. I have, um, I have seven eight point fives and two nines, so I'm Whoa. I'm set, I'm set on a freaking. I haven't seen any mainstream movies that are bad, to be honest. All the mainstream movies I watched were all like seven and a half to eights. They're all really good. Good. Hmm. So I was like, eh. yeah. Yeah. Uh, this year for me, the mainstream movies have been very Pretty solid. The fucking like, even black something phone. like Ball, like it was kind of stupid, but I still like really had fun with it. The, Which black, one? the black phone Ball. was a was a big um, surprise for me, man. I was not expecting to like it at all. For some either. reason, I just I don't like Derek, so yeah, I like that I, one. I'm not like the biggest fan either. And I like all the of premise didn't even seem like it seemed kind of something I've seen a million times. Like you know, I, I don't like. like I thought the trailer was bad. Yeah, and then yeah, I remember you saying that. I watched it and I was like, "Whoa, that was actually so much better." <laughs> it really shocked me. Me too. It, it re- felt like a uh, Doctor Sleep light. Yeah, I said, I, dude, th- huh, that's interesting because I, I felt I felt is the black. About well, I guess the black phone's considered to be fucking mainstream this year, isn't it? So you know, for the mainstream movies, man, I mean, you know, Scream was okay. There, not, there's I, another one coming out that looks really solid. Um, it's called like Bone something. Um, it seems like sort of like a like a vampire, but not, like Doctor Sleep type thing. Um, that looked pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So I, I yeah. think that one comes out in November or something. I mean, I wouldn't really consider the sadness to be more of the more of a mainstream movie. I think it's just it's well known no. in the community, but I think to the masses, Correct. it's not. But but the TCM I thought was just mindless, ridiculous, and it's fun. Fun. It, it's a, it was fun. It was it, a lot of fun. It, it's a bad it sequel fun. because it's a direct sequel to the original film. I think the storyline's actually really stupid. But to be honest, man, I was a little bit shocked by the gore in that, especially the bus scene. Like I was like, whoa, dude, that was pretty crazy. There's some pretty. I was amazing. a little shocked by Terrifier's gore too. Dude, <laughs> and I was just getting ah. gore. And I was just, you know, I'm I was like, what the fuck? That one scene was for rough. The, did you see they submitted it for the Oscars? <laughs> like Terrifier Amazing. two has got to be an anomaly it's it's an anomaly man like that movie got a theatrical release and it's known to the masses and it's got to be the goriest movie in the theatrical release i know that shit was massive it's what cracks me up is everybody's going nuts about brian paulin's gore film for this year but i'm just like you know what he got outdone by a mainstream movie this year (laughs) right well i like septic it's not paulin's best film but i i really enjoy i like everything paulin did but terrified too the look of art is the 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 kurt the character is like it, how he does it dude like just mm-hmm. the charisma and the mannerisms i will so say good. i don't want to talk too much on terrifier 2 but you know the movie was a you know it was so entertaining so fucking gory the performances are good the only thing that really kind of bugged me about terrifier 2 is that like it keeps the story it, it keeps telling you that it's going to tell you the story but it never fully delivers right like it keeps <laughs> no I, I was confused by the mythology at the end i was like wait what's going on now but i was it, like did i miss something in the two five hours, hours on, 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 on the only one two hours and 20 minutes purpose. in the in the whole movie they're hinting at they're going to tell you the story of terrify and it never delivers really because it's it is kind of a little bit confusing at the end to be honest it, it's very uh can yeah. i see something that i the noticed which I, yep. go ahead um do you know the little character that follows around Art the Clown? Mm-hmm. The, the oh, yeah, yeah. Great. Is that not reminiscent of the character that follows around the headless killer and headless? Right. Oh, I forgot about that. that. That's a good I comparison. It was right. similar to, do you guys remember the movie um, Sweat Shop? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And the little yeah. creatures like that? Yeah. Yeah. It reminded me of those. The kills yeah. in Sweat Shop yeah. are good, man. The big fucking hammer and shit. Oh, yeah. But yeah, no, that's a good Dude. comparison, Dave. That's a really good comparison. I never even really I thought mean, about it. I noticed because I was Angelus, and I was just like, this is very similar in of a way. Course. But of other- course. Right. That's really good. I love that little guy in in, in Headless because he keeps making, doesn't he just make that noise all the time? Or something? Yeah, 
So and just Jen- like his <laughs> him as a kid, Tim as a kid, reminding him of all the shit. It's a, it's a good. Look, that's a little nice little touch of that. Movie, I mean, at actually. least they told you who she was. Like she's that. you know the victim kind of thing and stuff. But but to be honest, man, like you know, generally when a movie runs two hours and twenty minutes, I'd be like, holy fuck, that runtime is way too long. I for can't believe film. it. But the fact that they it. ran it two hours and twenty minutes and didn't and they left the ending a little bit ambiguous was actually comical to me. It was fu- it, that that actually made me laugh out loud. I was like, <laughs> so you you build up this hype. We're gonna know everything. Nothing, absolutely fucking nothing. I'm like, okay, seriously, that's pretty funny. I'm rewatching but- that at the end of the year. I'm rewatching that in Halloween ends because I feel like yeah. they're going to be on my ten. I just don't know where. I have oh, wow. the director said that Terrifier three might be such a big movie that it might have to be two movies. <laughs> so he's oh, should be like trauma so shit, like Terrifier three part A, and then yeah. right, just like <laughs> like Class of Newcomb High, where it was like Return to Newcomb High, which is like one good movie and one okay movie because they just made it two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like yeah. a mainstream, well, a wannabe main mainstream Tom Six. That's kind of what I get out of this, and I'll tell you why. Dude, because Damian Tom Leone Six, or whatever the fuck is. Yeah, name but is? listen though, Tom Six when he made his second movie, mm-hmm. right? He intentionally, everybody had this, these criticisms for for the first Human Centipede. So the way I look at it was in the second movie when they did that, he said, "Okay, you thought that was hardcore, and you thought we were this. I, I haven't showed you that yet." So that's what he did. He I don't want to say trolled, but he's like, "Okay, now you guys talk shit. Check it, this." Yeah, that's it was what a happened to response. Terrifier. <laughs> Can we call yes. that BTO Bachman Turner Overdrive? You've been you ain't seen nothing yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Baby. laughs> but dude, same thing with Par- with uh, Terrifier too. People complain for lack of story. He gave us too much story and too much that was even convoluted. And then there was no plot. And he did all this other stuff. And then he came back with a certain scene, which is kind of going to be controversial in today's climate, I should say. And just just to f with people, just to say, okay, you thought that was hardcore. You thought that there was none of this. Well, I'm going to turn around and check this out. I completely yeah. think that was a response movie, just like. But the Human Centipede 2 was the definition of a response movie. I remember watching Human Centipede 2 and being like, I can't believe they're doing this. I cannot yeah. believe this is in a movie. Mm-hmm. I, I was like, mm-hmm. I, and as a but, budget, you know, to, really like, but take I, it back. Like I even said, though, with Human Centipede 2, it didn't surprise me. Of course, it was a response movie, but at the same time, it's like, oh. it, it goes back to the horror, you know, horror world film logic, too, about, you know, sequels. You know, you, you really try to ante up the game here you know you try to outdo yourself a little bit too so it has a little bit of that also i mean if well, if, also, if terrifier 2 wasn't as comedy. gory the black and, comedy in human centipede 2 was like dumbed the down version comedy. of their than their predecessors i'd just be like what the fuck you know like but like i get it you know you're trying to outdo yourself a little bit too as a response but i mean it happens a lot in film though too right yeah, so, but dude, sure. two hours and eighteen minutes for a slasher. If that's not a statement saying, "Here, here's your story, assholes," and check it out. And it's I mean, crazy too because I was reading reviews on it after, right. and, and a lot of people were like, "Oh yeah, for two hours and twenty minutes, fucking, you know, the story was stupid." I'm like, "Really, man? Like, we're watching a slasher film? Like, I it you, was I, so like entertaining. I just, I just thought it was so like, entertaining. I just thought it was comical, and yeah. I took it as a joke that he didn't deliver. He left it ambiguous, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's so funny." <laughs> but the movie was so entertaining. It was so well done in the gore factor and the acting and just the whole setup like it was shot well like everything about the movie was there really was just done so well. many scenes like individual like scenes that were that stand out like yeah. the scene <clears throat> in the uh you know the 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 halloween shop and the scene in that girl's bedroom the bedroom scene was oh. fucking next level fucking oh my god that was just i was like dude when she I moves just was to like I, is this for real like are you is this fucking for real like i literally was like, did like I, I can't imagine, believe this is did i imagine her yeah going, like, i can't Mom. believe it it was like he was set up too 2 when she fucking steps on that baby's head i was just like or like when he he fucks it and he was saying, I was just like, what is this? Why is this a thing? Like, who made this sick shit? Either, I thought I was imagining the like part where house. when she's like, Mom, and I'm like, she's still alive? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it was, was nasty, man. I'm like, it was nasty. Dude, that was I, some I, insanely I good gore. Like, really oh, yeah. good I gore, like man. We're seeing the climate of, uh, like, the the cinema type films change a little bit here. I think we're in like sort starting a new era, like how we had a 24 in uh, the, I would say the previous era, like we're seeing different attempts at things. Like look at um, the Thai West films, right? Like, uh, are we seeing the antithesis of a 24 now people coming out and be like, so you want art films, huh? What about just gore? <laughs> right. Well, Possibly, there's been a bunch of them this year. We're man. just seeing different, great. Uh, attempts at, at trying different shit like like who releases a who starts a trilogy and releases two of the first films 
of the trilogy in the same year like they w- they did with uh, with Ty West movies you know what i mean right and they teased each one and they're like you know what even if this first one fails we already fucking filmed half of the second one or Mm -hmm. we filmed the second one like we're going all in on this and i just think that that idea is great and we just saw like they're doing a trilogy of strangers films now and like this idea of doing multiple works could could take all these vhs movies like every year there's a vhs movie now yeah mm-hmm. and also just like, like the idea that oh, this the movie was miss. a massive success it made 10 million which is insane for no marketing it was all word of mouth right. and also the fact that it was two out two plus hours unrated which means that you're automatically uh you, the last film we saw come out unrated was hatchet 2 and it got pulled the very first day mm-hmm. because people were complaining yeah. so i just feel like we're seeing a, a the, the tide shift a little bit and and this could be huge for the mpaa too because it's basically saying we don't fucking need you isn't it yeah like, isn't and, and it COVID helped that too, how COVID did because we started getting little movies in the theater and then they this just is, kind of accept this is like the meaning yeah. of irony because this world is so everybody gets so upset about everything these days but then our movies are just getting crazier and crazier and then being released <laughs> unre- like unrated gore fest and shit like it's almost like a statement saying "fuck you" to the world, "fuck you, PC people." We're gonna do this shit, and it's gonna stay. It's gonna stay. Yeah, but it's art. I mean, like that's the funny thing is, like, no matter, like, of course it how is, liberal, but people, it doesn't I, I matter. Have, people still like get offended by this shit. Yeah, it's people just, still get offended by this shit. My brain. Right, and, and yeah. people still get offended as hell over everything. But like, you look at Terrifier too. Like, it is just, it's senseless. Most of the, honestly, mostly, I'm gonna be honest with you. Ninety percent of the people getting offended are just like fucking 15 year old kids on twitter and <laughs> and people that want to push their political agenda that get behind it like, like and complain about it. Be getting offended who, what, when you were 15 <laughs> were you getting Most offended are, by this it's, all, it's all bullshit they just want to stir the pot for attention uh, uh, young kids and then these weird political i, I feel like if, people if, also just like want to do it shit. all the time they're like they're gonna try to come through they, they do scare tactics like oh these drag queens are trying to turn your kids gay and in reality it's like dude no no one gives a fuck <laughs> 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 no these alternative motives but we 90 percent of people just want to get up and go to work and but, not be bothered but we've talked about this before the yeah. world that we live in man most people most of the new millennials they they've grown up in a in a cyber world right so they just feel like they can say anything they want because it's at their fingertips right we grew up in a different world where we face people and you said things and you kept things to yourself but you because you respected people and it was a, just a totally different type of reality and that's yeah. why everyone's and the like fact this that nobody acts like this it's all attention getters world. Because yeah, people, you know, we used to talk shit to each other's face. You got to say shit to their face, and then you get punched sometimes, and that kind of. But if you humble. grow, but if you grow up in a world yeah, but we where we thought you about good it, things, but if you politics. grow, up, if you grow up in a world where you <laughs> literally sit at home all day and deal with technology and stuff, and you don't have interactions with people and shit like this, this is all just attention bullshit, man. You're sitting at home because you. At the same time, right now is not a great time to be growing up in. I mean, you yeah. got COVID, you got fucking terrible economy, you got all sorts oh, of terrible. Shit but that's why you got 15 year old kids you can't that even are, do drugs anymore because of fentanyl. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, you got, you got fifteen year old <laughs> yeah, kids. So I was just telling my wife this like an hour ago on the phone. I was like, "There's two yeah. things that suck. You can't just go to a party one day and like innocently have like a friend and be drunk and you know you do a line of coke when you don't ordinarily do yes. coke. Now you do one line of coke, you could die. You so die. that goes out yeah. the window. Now you can't flirt with people because it. like, it's a different was, world. A, I, I don't. I honestly think the kids nowadays, uh, they they got kind of rough a little bit. So. Oh, dude, it sucks. But here's the funny: like my daughter's 16, and she cannot stand her generation. She is so freaking against everybody online constantly. And this is a girl who, by the way, is mixed. Okay, and she says it to me all the time. She goes, "I'm t- so tired." And this might upset people, but she goes, "I'm so tired of white people kissing our asses all the time online." It's, they go, they go above and beyond. To freaking mm-hmm. to, to to say look at look at we're not racist we got to push you guys up ahead this and that and my and she also is friends with a ton of homosexual people and she's also tired again and this is my daughter saying this I'm tired of of white people always pushing this the gay agenda and the black agenda on us constantly she goes just can not everybody just be chill they oh. they're overcompensating and they're trying too hard and this is a 16 year old girl thing it was like they're projecting their insecurities on the people like they're like I don't hate gay people look you're you're my friend you're gay you're black I'm <laughs> yeah, exactly and then she was like dude it's, it's I'm just, a, I'm world, just a person we're just people right people are people we're just people 
cool. Thank you, sir. We, we, we used to have we used to have normal are, conversations back in the day, face to face. But this is yeah, the cyber world has created all this shit, man. It's, yeah. it's sensitivity, oh, it and, sucks, it's, dude. and it's it's all the sucking up. It's because when one thing gets announced and. Oh my god! Like this is why I, I don't even bother with Twitter and fucking even Instagram. Like I barely ever even read conversations on there because somebody posts something. Everything is everybody's a fucking Nazi these days. Everybody. But also, but also, you oh, got to a lot of bullshit. Like it's it's a lot of these politicians run strictly on social politics and this social war that doesn't yeah. exist. It's right. something they created to win the election. So mm-hmm. that's why they come out and they'll say stuff like yeah. these people are trying to change our way of life. It's it's typical one hundred and one bullshit. Hey, they're trying to change the American family value garbage. They've been doing it since day one. It's all fucking garbage. It's right. all yeah. Bullshit. They literally create yeah. problems. Exactly. They create problems exactly. to argue it to get their point across right. like they're telling us that crime is out of control crime is down since, since it's been the 90s you know what i mean crime is not out of control they also tell you that oh the the, the colorado is the, the most violent state right now that's the people electing will say that because the legalized marijuana whatever the fuck but here's what it is it's funny is all the most violent states with the most violent statistics i don't know i'm not even trying to get political here they're all red states and the people saying that they're guys that are red so, bro, fuck off. Yep. You're dumb. <laughs> right. Every time some politician says something negative about something and tries to blame the other side, they're the ones responsible for it. Democrat or Republican. It's always like that. You always catch the Democrats stealing money. You always catch the Republicans fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right, though. Ohio, Texas, and Florida, the highest crime. Red states. No. Yeah, they're all red states. Right. It's just, it's just fucking, and then the blue, like. Meth heads. <laughs> Yeah, this fucking is insane, man. No, like Louisiana, places like that have very high violent crime. Alaska is number one. I actually don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. In Canada, we don't even know what crime is. We leave our doors unlocked. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we're polite pay. to everybody. We fucking, we shake hands. We we hold doors for people. We help old ladies across Not the street. Not those rich assholes from We Ontario. live in Pleasantville. You ever <laughs> seen Pleasantville? Well, that entire movie is Canada. <laughs> it's fucking Canada. In Canada, Tim Hortons even tastes good. In America, it's the worst place ever. Yeah, no, actually, oh, no, Tim, Hort- no, Tim Hortons, that. that's universal, because that tastes like shit here, too. <laughs> Our Tim Hortons are so bad here, it's not even funny. Well, the Tim Hortons, you actually, here, in the you States, go to Tim's here. I've heard, it for free. I've actually heard that the Tim Hortons in the States actually are different than the ones up here, like, they, they use different yeah, they shit. Yeah, so I've heard that oh, from Canadians. Well, maybe mine's the same, because I'm where I am, though, but I'm maybe. in Buffalo. Right near Canada. Yeah, so maybe you're practically. I have better things if, I'm there, if I ever come up there, I'll, I'll try the Tim Hortons just for two seconds, just to see. Yeah, yeah dude, you got to at least try the coffee. I, I, all I'm pushing is the coffee. The other, the I'll, food I'll, and the donuts are well, average. Now the coffee, I'm eating on the donuts. I've seen a the couple competitive eaters that have They're tried fine. Tim Hortons down in the I've states, did, and I've then never. Ta- all donuts taste the same to me. No, no. not Paula's donuts. No. You come no. out here, I'll take no. you to Paula's donuts. You'll no, fucking shit. Donuts. Cafe donuts. What were you saying, uh, moods about a competitive eater eating Tim Hortons American? Yeah, well, I actually just recently watched somebody, and he he had eaten um, Tim Hortons in the States, and he, he didn't like it, but then he was like, well, people are telling him, like, if you're ever in Canada, you know, try Tim Hortons. It apparently tastes different, he, and he was up here, and he was in Toronto doing con, or, uh, doing con, uh, challenges and stuff, and and he did, and he's like, you're right, it does taste different up here. I was like, crazy. So, you never know. You know, I didn't know that Tim Horton played for the Penguins at one point. Yeah. Oh, I you didn't know that? The other day. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, he Good played most Tim of his... Well, he wasn't a, a superstar. Most of his yeah, career. he was like 41 by that time. Well, he played... <laughs> fuck, man. He played like 26 years in the NHL. Well, he died after a game, right? So... Right. He he left the rink after a night. He scored a couple goals actually, which was unusual for Tim Hortons because he didn't really wasn't an offensive player. He was more of a fighter, but or more of a yeah bruiser really. And then he uh, got in a car accident, and died. Yeah, that's oh, messed up. Fuck yeah, but he played like he was in the league for like twenty something years. It was fucking nuts. But he died in a car accident. Yep. I think he. They figure he might have fallen asleep at the wheel or something. Actually, he played for all three of our teams. <laughs> he forgot to drink his own coffee that day. Right. He played for the Leafs, obviously, and then the Penguins and, and the same. Yeah. Maybe he ate some American Tim Hortons instead. <laughs> <laughs> Put his ass out. Come Actually, out. at the time when he died, he they they were still local. They were still local in Toronto. Yeah, I they remember. Even I used region- to see him just o- in yeah. Canada. Yeah. yeah, they were just regional at the time. They weren't even nationwide. It's crazy. Honestly, they though, here in the nineties. Yep. Even about 10 years ago, Tim Hortons was much better than it is now. It's just really bad. All the donuts are sweaty. They're old. They're gross. Sweaty. And it's just horrible. <laughs> no, I kid you not. I get it. And it's like donuts. my donut looks like it's fucking 500 pound guy walking down a street fucking in the summer. I'm like, Dude, I literally mean that when I say 
I've never noticed the difference between any fucking place with donuts. Dude, they all <laughs> well, the cafe is the best. You have to get cafe if you stop by here on when you if you come here for like that Christmas party, you have to we'll have to get, I'll get cafe donuts for us. But I'm literally when I buy Tim Hortons donuts, which never happens anymore, I'm like, bro, do I have to give this donut mouth to mouth before I can eat it? I feel like I need to resuscitate the fucking donut before I can eat it. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just because I'm like not a donut guy and I, I barely ever eat them, but I don't know. You're a real piece of shit, you know that, JP? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, I have a topic real quick. If you guys are cool with this. What do you got? So, uh, Let's do hot or not. Okay. Uh, Bill from Code Red, hot or not? Um, Not. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Rest uh, in, yeah, I, that's something I had on my list Rest of things to talk Bill. about. But, uh, Bill yeah, from he, Code Red. Yeah. Bill Banana Man. Olsen passed away, which, you know, I mean, it's not a surprise. He's been sick for years. I think it was yeah. just a matter of time. But yeah, anyways, Bill from Cobra. Oh, I didn't know away, he so. was sick. Is that Thanks. why he was so miserable? Pretty much. Thanks for the movies out. Yeah. You know, yeah. He got lots of good shit out on Blu ray. Yeah. 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 He was a very uh, odd he, and eccentric uh, person, but, you know, he. Yeah, he was definitely interesting. His banana suit. <laughs> <laughs> the banana suit is funny as shit. Was is the it, cold red stuff quality looking or not? Was it just something that he did at first and that, that's the claim to fame? Because I wouldn't buy from him because I basically boycotted because of things I heard about him. Because I'm, well, I'm a they, big they were really <laughs> overpriced, and there was a lot of like, oh, it's it pr- it, there's a lot of like Charlie Band level shit in there where it's like, yeah. oh, this. Like I was talking about this earlier, like Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker. I remember Moods had me send him a copy of that from Code Red's website in like 2012, and wow. it was like out of print like the, a month later, and it's still in print today. <laughs> like like yeah. you can get it. Kino, Kino had but it. Do they look good? Did they look good? Were they good, good transfers yeah. or not? Yeah, they look yeah. all right. The, the, like I wouldn't say they're the best, but uh, no, well, they went in waves. The original were, DVDs were a little bit rough, and I think some of the first Blu-rays that came out. But then the transfers started getting really good, and Encode Red became kind of a like a household name right, that you were willing to trust. Yeah, they used on to not have getting good transfers. Codes. Yeah, yeah, because okay. they used to be strictly. Right. Well, they went from in stores, and then Bill was just selling his stuff right on his website, and then that was I don't really think working too well. And then they had to kind of branch out and stuff, but. It's, it's Every, gone, so he it's started gone. an early boutique label, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Code Red and props for that. Code Red you know? is super old. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of his, his early brother DVDs. Too. His brother Scorpion. and him, Walt and Walt runs Scorpion. Runs Scorpion. Yeah, which, which I is, think is better than was better than Code Red personally. Which is Scorpion is through the Ronin site. You buy their products yeah. on Ronin. So, but but the, Kino, also like, like the Kino, Kino when they started messing their with Kino, yeah. I yeah. feel like that's when they actually became like worth the value. <laughs> Because you like, dude. Some of those things I remember in like 2012, they were like thirty dollars a Blu-ray. In 2012, that was very high. Yeah. That's well, the price came down because the distribution deal was more widely produced, right? So they yeah. were able to get the product out there, and they were allowed, to, you know, sell a lot more. When when Scorpion was doing it by themselves and shit, it was the, the amounts that they were producing were so much less, so they had to charge more, really, to make their money back, kind of thing, right? So yeah, the distribution with Kino was the best thing for for Walt and stuff, and yeah, the titles are so much easier to get. Me and Dave were talking about this before the show, and uh, it's been nice for collectors. The price has gone yeah. down. They're easier to get. They're on more platforms. Like, you know, if you're an Amazon person, you can go to Ronin if you want. You can get them through Kino. You can get them. Like, they're all over the place, which before it was not the fucking case. It was, it was terrible. So. Yeah. Um, but so rest in peace to Bill. Like, despite what I mean, even a lot of people who I who I see like there were literally like three people who are like, even though this guy talked shit on me all the time, like for no reason, like I'm still sad that he died. <laughs> like, like uh, one of the dudes from wow. vinegar syndrome, um, Joe, no, not Joe. Uh, is it Brad? Brad, he works with, uh, di- um, acquisitions. I think, he he said something like that, and then uh, Michael Felsher as well. Um, so did so did uh, Joe Rubin. He said he had a real nice one, yeah. And then uh, um, fucking uh, David Gregory from Severin said something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this is like it's crazy to you know. It, obviously, 
whenever you have these these labels and stuff that have been around forever and stuff like that like these guys sort of all rub shoulders they know each other yeah at one time well, of course another. they have to and, man it's it's all competitive it's like friendly fire and stuff like that right i mean i'm sure there was times where you know maybe there was a little bit of animosity and things like that i mean it's still a competitive world right you know bill was very he was yeah but dude's dead now it's time to pay any respect you have you right. should pay it right yeah well i just i thought it was really cool that a lot of the people that even had issues with him whether it was unjust or not like didn't really give a fuck and they're just like hey this is sad <laughs> dave in the in As john lennon would say everybody loves you when you're six feet underground even in the totally. new even in the new um uh uh, uh sean donahue um fucking documentary um the the florida documentary. yeah 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 so there's there's a couple parts and what, what is it called again blood sweat and sunshine blood, blood. Sweat. Blood guts, blood, and sunshine. blood guts, blood guts and sunshine. You're right. So it's the history yeah. of Florida, of uh, Florida horror. And if you don't know anything about Florida regional horror films, and there's just so many filmmakers down there. But anyways, he made a John Donahue's from there and he interviews everybody around. And there's this, <laughs> there's this classic partner with Stephen Biro from, uh, he's the owner of unearthed films Unearthed. and he's literally talking shit about other people. And like, it's funny when you, the way he chops it up and stuff, and he's talking shit about other filmmakers in Florida. And he's like, you're jealous. And it's, it's actually really entertaining, but I, I can't tell if it's fully him being a dick or just, you know, just that friendly type of fire and stuff like, but I have heard that Biro has said shit like that in the past and stuff like that. Like he gets a little bit yeah, too sometimes competitive. Sometimes he says shit, man. He don't give a fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Like he gets a little bit competitive yeah. and he, and, and basically what it came down to is he was a little bit jealous of Chris Woods and, you know, the box because the box was doing a little bit too good, I guess, is what Chris Woods says and stuff like that. And it was, just, it was that's, just, what, that's according to Chris Woods. I don't, I don't think Byra Biro does. He he mostly buys and distributes movies. He's made a couple, but yeah. you know what I mean. I don't. I just don't see like I don't know. Whatever the bad blood happened, it's like. But the ending was great with Joel D. Weinkoop. He was wow. like, "Who you say? He said that, <laughs> dude." Weinkoop was the best in that man. But I just thought it was really funny because he's always got, the best. Yeah, yeah. But I thought it was a really good. Did you buy this, Mitz? Did you buy this at the yeah. table or something? Yeah, yeah. It's it was distributed. It was on Vinegar Central's website, and I forgot to pick it up, and I grabbed the package a couple months ago. And it fucking sold out on the website. I was like, oh, shit. So I was talking to Sean Donahue there. I was talking actually about him and Dave's uh, top 10 list that they did and stuff. And and I noticed it was on the table. I'm like, oh, fuck, dude, I need to grab this. He's like, yeah, it sold out on the website, man. And I'm like, oh, cool. awesome. So I picked it up from him and a couple other titles and stuff. But it's a good watch. It's a really informative watch. I learned a lot, actually, about yeah, that regional Florida films. Yeah. And like... I knew a lot of the the directors and people from that were from, but I didn't realize there was that many. It, it's actually quite yeah, crazy. It seems like there's a big community. Even I've been aware of like the big community of Florida filmmakers mm-hmm. and stuff for a long time. But that that's, that does sound really interesting. Yeah. But yeah, the the I remember just recently the Vinegar Syndrome and the Synapse release of uh, uh, Thriller was. <laughs> a big issue right like so there is this sort of like sometimes there's like some beef or and sometimes it's more like friendly what are you talking about like thriller yeah yeah, thriller well it made uh, sense though because that was more than beef (laughs) but vinegar syndrome though like you know it announces shit and then all of a sudden fucking seven they still had their whatever rights to it but they rushed out this fucking release just to fucking get the up on it synapse what other would never do that separate vinegar syndrome work out of the same office yeah, they're cool, dude. Did I did they're I they're say cool Severin? Yeah. yeah oh, did. sorry. I meant to say Synapse. I know who released it. I have I have the Synapse and the Vinegar I know. Syndrome. I just I, I only say I only corrected you just so people don't think it was. Oh, Severin. right, right, right. So sometimes I say things because I'm thinking too fast. My mouth's not moving fast enough. But anyways, the point is they rushed this out to kind of get the jump on the set. Like I understand why Vinegar Syndrome would be a little bit pissy about that because this thing was coming. They own the rights to it. Right. So. Yeah, and also. Uh, Clearly, the Vinegar Syndrome is a superior version. Yeah. Well, they used the different print, though, too, right? And, of course, the print is a lot They just threw the scan old DVD on there. Right. They didn't rescan it. They didn't do anything different. Yeah. Yeah. So. It was, it was, a, it was, what a, uh, it was HD, but it was just a scan. They just threw it on there. They didn't make a new scan. Why would they? I mean, it's no, not, it's they not were, even a legal They, they were just rushing it. that shit out to be dickheads, man, is what they were yeah, doing. Yeah, exactly. They rushed that shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. rush your movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember what speaking of bill i remember one time toby hooper got into it with bill on twitter or, or facebook bill olsen 
Yes, because remember he released Spontaneous Combustion. That movie sucks. Yeah, it's not yeah. very good at all. Uh, well, Toby Hooper was like, "Yo, I I fucking own this movie. What are you doing, dude?" <laughs> and like, oh, I remember. It that. was like, it, it was like this thing. Right. But I, apparently, maybe Toby Hooper didn't own it because that release stayed coming out. So he realized he nobody wanted to own it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, nobody wanted it. I have that, and I, I have that code red. I've never even seen that movie more than once in my life, and that's never. I'm never again. I never upgraded yeah, we can't it because make a Toby Hooper top ten, Dave. No, you can't. I I never upgraded my Anchor Bay DVD because I just I've never liked the movie. And you know, spending thirty it's not bucks. Like I saw it. Spending thirty it bucks sucks. on those code reds. Are I like, skipped no, it. Hey, that's no. what I do. Skip shitty movies. Yeah, <laughs> good old Toby. Hooper. It's, it's got a cool concept and Brad Dorf's in it, and it's a Toby Hooper movie from 1990. You think this would be all right, and you watch it, and you're like, right. this ain't all right at all. Yeah, I love Brad Dorf too. I, he, that's a, oh, he's awesome. Never got besides his Chucky role, like his like actual physical appearance roles. I feel like he never got as many roles as he really fucking deserved. He's in everything. Great. I mean. He got an Academy Award nomination for One Flew the Cuckoo's Nest. Yep. Was like well, right. Yeah, that. But so I'm just saying, young. like, in the horror world. You know oh, yeah. I mean? Well, I mean, he's in so much shit. He's in body. But he's always, like, a big He's yeah. never, like, you know. Except, like, Sheriff Brackett was one of his. his Urban other. legend. He's usually the best. There's just three. Yeah. He rules. He's always the best part of the movies he's in, usually. Yeah, he is, man. Dude. Yeah, he's the best part of that movie. Yeah. He was cast <laughs> so perfect for Chucky. Okay. That fucking voice of his, man, is so... Ma- He's got one of the best voices, man. He really oh, does. Totally. This in disturbing behavior, William Sadler just rips off Brad Dorvis' performance from Graveyard Shift. <laughs> does he really? I've never <laughs> seen disturbing like behavior. janitor, and then he just does exactly what Brad... <laughs> I, I really, like Sadler, too. I, I, really love Sadler. I, lo- I just like disturbing behavior, but it's, it's, you know, but it's just like, I was like, this is kind of really close. Right. You know what? I gotta ask you guys a question because I had to watch Urban Legends recently, and, and Brad Dorf was in it. That's why I started thinking about Brad Dorf, and I had to watch it for another show. And someone, when somebody presented it on the show, they said that it was kind of a forgotten slasher from the '90s, and that most oh. people that like it kind of mock it. And I said, <clears throat> I go, really? I think that it's it's kind of like the number three franchise of the '90s, hundred percent slasher. Yeah, it's right? very popular. Yeah, only- that's what I thought. Okay, you can quote out. me. Yeah. You can quote me from this. I know what from you this did podcast. last summer: Scream, Urban Legend. Yeah, we've, those are the big three. Yep. We've Everybody done. We've reviewed. Is this person really young? What's that? What? Vince? Oh, Mooch we, is talking. And said something we Mooch. we have reviewed all those franchises, and yep. you, I've I, right. I, you could probably even quote me on here, but I even said that I like Urban Legend. <laughs> I know, obviously, this is you know, people. I, I even someone even commented back to me one time, like you're fucking insane. And I said I didn't say it was better. I said I prefer it, but I said Urban Legend. If I was to rank, you know, the the first film from all three of those franchises, I would watch Urban Legend first because I like. The, um, the whole idea of urban legends and I like the whole idea of the film and stuff like that. I've mentioned that a couple like times in the Legend podcast. Two more than one. I don't even I think like I'd two is better than one. one. Two over anything. I I know what you did last summer, but that's just me. I know what you did last like summer. Oh my god! I, I can't even. I don't even like it. I'm not even a fan of it at all. Wow. I, no, I I really don't like. The, it drives me nuts. What's his fucking name? Freddy I, Prince I like Jr. He's the worst fucking actor. That movie has horrible acting. In it. For and, and and then this is one of those he things sucks. where I never right. like to, you know, when I'm watching reviewing indie film, like criticizing indie act, acting is just bullshit sometimes. But when you're dealing with a big budget, you know, a class fucking type, you know, whatever it is, like these guys are well known actors and actresses and stuff like that. And I know what he did last summer is hella fucking weak on the acting tip, man. Like it's really, That's really the time, fucking man. bad. It was about looks. Like it, Remember though, it was about looks. It was a guy. It was about people from WB shows and it other was shows. And Dawson's it, and you know fucking it was Creek. All looks. All that yeah, bullshit. Dawson's it was. All, it was all those fucking. You know, those teen idols. All those fucking beautiful people. Right. It was the Maryland. It was the beautiful Not people. Real actors. You know, the I like disturbing behavior better than all those. Me too. Me too. Probably I, better. I haven't seen it. I, I like. It. I like Distur- it Disturbia better than that shit, man. The remake of fucking <laughs> Rear Window for fuck's sakes with the fucking clown from uh, the Fair. Transformers movies. What's Shia that guy's LaBeouf. name? Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, I like that. But I think the one that like really got it all to come together perfect is the faculty. Like that whole era. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. It's not a slasher, though, too. It's cool. Right, not it's a got slasher, but it's a... But the, it has for that post-screen same, time, it's awesome. A, it's, a good, it's a cool movie. I agree. Even though yep. it has 
the other side of the coin, well, I shouldn't say the other side, the same side of the coin, Fred, Fred, Freddie Prince Jr. And um, what's the dude from uh, that movie? Um, Josh, Harnett. Into, Josh Harnett. He is a right. he is fucking horrible in that. He's he's got the worst delivery no, ever, man. He's great in that movie. He sucks <laughs> well, in that movie. And I always I always has- criticize Josh Harnett, man. He has this he has this tone about him, and he's got like this. He has no emotion in what he's doing ever. Yeah, in his acting, passion in his eyes. It's so annoying to watch him <laughs> act. I'm just like, dude, are you I, I into this role? Are you into this? Are you just fucking here for the paycheck? Like, it drives me nuts, man. I don't know. There's something about that I guy, man. Drugs, drugs, and well, I hate his fucking hair. I hate his hair too, to be honest. But the good thing about Faculty and um and Urban Legend and even Scream is the background actors are usually character actors, especially the faculty as Robert Patrick. Um, yeah, yeah. Who the fuck? Uh, Selma Hayek's in that too, yeah. right? And then it's yeah, got James is. Bond. Parker, yeah, she, she plays, plays the Bond. nurse. Um, everybody and their brother in that movie in the background. And, and so does um, Urban Legend has a couple. Brad Dorf. Well, I know what you did last summer. I feel like has zero. It has zero good actors in the back to help the young actors, right. which is a major. You're right. Uh, what about what's her name? Well, I, I don't know how you feel about her, but Anne Hayes at the time. Oh yeah, so Anne Hayes. She was you good know? at the time, wouldn't you say? She's a good yeah. actress. Yeah, she's yeah. a good actress. Yeah, I mean, it was did it Anne was a bit die this year, but she yeah, did she did. She Poor did thing. die this year. I just thought of that. Fuck. Hmm. Yeah. I've seen that my friend Dalma movie recently? Yeah. Oh, do I love it? I've seen like three. Yeah, times. that's a good movie. She's good in that. Everybody's good in that. That's yes. a good movie. I forgot she was in it. That's right. That was her. Yeah, it's good in that. Good, good casting. Great movie. Great yeah, movie. Yeah, I, I like that. I'm going to get my wife to watch it. Now that she's watched the Dahmer series, I'm like, okay, you got to see fucking, I've been telling you for three years, you got to see my friend Dahmer. And there's no killing in it, so you should be happy. She you know watched I mean? the Jeremy Renner one, too. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's I got to lead up to that. I and mean, watch yeah, Secret but, Life of Jeffrey Dahmer, the the nasty, cheap one from the 90s. It's really can't gross. find it. I it, can't find it. I've it is hard to find now. I have yeah. an interview. Is that DVD out of print now? Yeah. yeah. Really? I, I thought it was still on the yeah, website. Maybe, maybe it is. Yeah. It's, you know, Dahmer is one of the serial it, killers I, that has like a lot of really good adaptations, man. There's a lot of really good ones. In fact, there's yes. really not any bad ones. It's kind of crazy. No. So. It is weird. It is weird. There's That's like, just a story, man. People like to hear his story for some reason. Well, he was always the most fascinating. Yeah, I've said many times, so even on this show, to... he was always the most fascinating. It's crazy. Part. It is. It's a crazy Him and Ed story. Gein have the weirdest stories to me. Yeah. I think Ed Gein Agreed. is super interesting, uh, but he didn't really kill that many people, so that's why he's not like as Boy, notorious. But, but he was a weird good dude. He's a weird dude. He's the only one that I have any real sympathy for, um, because I, his was the more ranged bad. is the best Ed Gein adaptation. Well, but I like the Ed Gein one, just the regular one that has rails back in it. I've always been partial to that. Texas Chainsaw for Ed Gein and Sounds of the Land. (laughs) Come on now. And Psycho, if you want to go that route, yeah. Steve Rails back. He's so good, man. The Range is an underrated movie, though. That's that's a under. I think it's a great movie, man. And Steve Rails back back was in the best too. Beanie's first work, uncredited. Rails back as fucking yep. Charles Manson and Helter Skelter. So yeah. good. Yeah, he the two best freak I'm telling you, Helter Skelter and freaking the other one. The the other one I No said, one's uh, ever Edgeen. played Manson. Yeah, he's great in both of them. No in my opinion, no one's never portrayed Manson as good as Steve Railsback did in Helter Skelter. Oh, yeah. He looks like him. He sounds like he just he, he it was so What about Bill Mosley? Bosley could have. Could have. He yeah. did. Yeah. Devil's yeah. rejects. <laughs> Well, yeah, but he was going to do. Did you know what happened with that? There was going to be another movie, and you know what happened? Some guy advertised that that he was making a Manson movie, and that freaking Mosley was going to be in it as Manson, and the word got out for a little bit. I don't know if you guys remember. I remember. Well, I remember that from Horror Bid. It was bullshit. I I met him. Bill Mosley is the only horror person that I've met face-to-face at a convention at all. And I talked to him about it, and he said it was total bullshit. The guy just made it up, and it started making the rounds, and I called mm-hmm. him on it. And then I, I even talked to him. He goes, listen, if you want to make me an offer, I'll be glad to be in this movie. But you can't be going around telling people this. And then it got shut down. But the guy just fucking, it was a complete bullshit. He did, yeah, never once bullshit. spoke to Mosley. He just said, yeah, Mosley uh, is, is Charles Manson. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that some, that's some I mean, straight bullshit. I mean, it made bullshit. sense, but. <laughs> that's some straight bullshit right there, man. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. It's fucking funny. I know. It's it amazing what people will do, right? Like, how are you not going to get called on that shit? Like, well, you what, know what? what? Look at it this way. 
Remember what's his name made a fake thing and it ended up making Eli Roth ended up making Clown. a movie Clown. because of it. Yeah. Okay, got him. Well, that's Ross, what I'm saying. Clown better than most of the Eli Roth movies. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I did Clown. Man, Clown's better than most of Eli Roth's actual directed movies. It's funny. It's like the third time I've Clown has been brought up in a conversation like the last week for myself. I love Clown. <laughs> what? I, yeah, I know. Yeah, weird, Clown's right? Good. Somebody brought it up on. Clown they left solid. a comment to one of my videos. To, Have you seen Clown before? And it was, oh, maybe it was a couple weeks ago. I I had, a, I was talking with someone about Clown too. And I was like, yeah, fucking, I can't remember what the conversation was, but that yeah, weird. <laughs> like, maybe because clowns are hot because of art, possibly. Well, could yeah. be. You know what? There's a lot of good clown horror movies too. Like, Clownado. You got, oh, Stitches is great. Stitches yeah. is great. Too. Clownado's fucking Stitches awesome, man. Stitches is solid. Yeah. Stitches and Clown are both really good. Yeah, For Stitches, Stitches is actually has the a best lot of them. musical. Circus of the Dead's has the Circus best. Of that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. That's good oh, too. Circus of the Dead is fucking awesome, dude. I love that movie, man. So yeah, good, good, man. So good, man. Stitches has the best music cues ever in it, though. It had literally the best music cues. It's so good. Fuck Everybody man. happy? You just died in my arms tonight. <laughs> died when that when yep. that song died in kicks the arms. in. Dude. Oh my god, it's the best. That's so, awesome. good. so good. That was 2014, wasn't it? Yeah. Stitches. You know, yeah. I feel like people yeah. like have forgotten about that film, man. It's crazy. Like you never it hear. Doesn't get anymore. a lot of pub. You're right. Yeah, underrated. Right. It it is, man. It was a big one when it came out. And it just seemed to like disappear from people's minds. It's really like strange. Clown's underrated too. You, you feel know, like that would be brought up more. It's better than it. You know, there's a clown. Like, is, I agree. Yeah. 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 Those are at least both, overshadowed. Those are both eight and a half. To me. I think I'd give them both eight and a half. I'd watch those again anytime. We need. I think we need to do a clown volume too. I think what happened what was though volume? with stitches <laughs> shitty. And like Circus shitty. of the Dead, and it was all it, shit clown movies. What Clownado was, and yeah, Clown the Clown, Clown Nato Nato and uh, Wrinkles the Clown. Oh, Wrinkles you guys are pieces. Of- Wrinkles was horrible. <laughs> I like Clownado. Fuck you, man. I thought it was fun. Clownado was the best. Clownado was way too there fucking long. There you go. Long. There you go, hours. Dave. See, JP, it was actually it's it better. I mean, out of the gags, did I watch Wrinkles? I don't remember watching Wrinkles. Wrinkles was. was tedious to get through, man. He was. I was on that show. Mockumentary. Yeah, Dude, I feel like I was on that. Sh- I watched gags and I watched fucking Clownado. I wasn't on the show, but I saw both those for yeah, story. I did not like either one. Like Clownado was really the only one I enjoyed, and I actually it was too long. That's definitely a complaint with it, but it was at least it was fun. Fuck, it was more serious. Than I think we enjoy. reviewed Angel Heart on that show too, and I was like, this is so well, I was much that show. better. I was on that show. I, I reviewed Angel Heart with us because I gave it an eight and a half. Angel Heart's a good movie, man. Angel Heart's you underrated. On that show, Dave. For sure. Yeah, I was on that show. Yeah. You don't remember Wrinkles? <laughs> I don't remember Wrinkles at all. You know what I think? That was an early stitches? show with you in it then. Wow. You know what yeah, I think? I'm going to look up if I watched Wrinkles. I might have skipped Wrinkles. Maybe stitches, I didn't watch Wrinkles. Stitches got under, got thrown to the side because I think, what, a couple years after the It films came out, one and two, and then people right. are just like, these are the only clown yeah. movies that really matter because, you know, they're legitimately good movies. You know, and it's We need kinda, to do. Stitches, clown, clown and, and one yep. other. I can't what believe we've never clown? reviewed Stitches on this channel. Uh, on this uh, podcast, that's insane to me. Too bad there's a Terrifier two because it could have been could have been Terrifier as the third. We, we did Terrifier one. Already. Oh well, <laughs> Terrifier two. That there you go. True. You can put it. <laughs> I'm doing Terrifier two this week actually. <laughs> so <laughs> I wouldn't mind watching it again. I'm going to watch it do, again. Did we do? You terrifier? can come and join us if you want. If you can wake up, uh, Dave. I will. <laughs> did we do what moods? We did that as a feature review. Terrifier, yeah. Fuck, I don't even remember that. Holy crap! I don't know. I think it was a like a Patreon pick, like a oh, yeah. featured pick. Hmm. Two words: camper van comedian. Two out of ten moods rating for Wrinkles the Clown. I didn't see Wrinkles. What was my two word <laughs> review? <laughs> wow. Uh, camper van comedian. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I know what I'm referring to, <laughs> dude. That movie sucked, man. I, I, it's the funny thing is, oh man, oh, I, it was such a slug. It was a slog to get through, man. I, okay. I hated every minute of it, man. I just Jeremy gave it three and a half, bro. Yeah, it was a horrible mockumentary. Like I thought it was done so poorly. But anyways, that's me. Is that the one that had Lauren Ashley Carter in it? No, that's gags. That's gags, gags is the one I saw, and I only I like watched her. it because she was in it. Because oh. I like her. That's the only reason I watched it's it. Really I, gave, good. I gave Gags two out of five. Damn. I, I probably okay. around oh, four out of, out of ten on, on that, too. I, I, I was somewhere in that range. I know I was under par. You gave it one and a half moods. Oh, I was oh, even worse. What about that drive through That's a decent clown one. I've never seen uh, drive through Isn't that like Australian or something? That one's or actually wrong? got some pretty that's decent. That's one, right? drive through is good, man. It's good. Is it like an early 2000s or late 90s? We do the whole 
Killjoy franchise. Now fuck off, man. Oh, fuck that fucking, fucking movie. Like Part two was the worst Joe, thing I ever saw. Kill Joe bombs God. from outer fucking space. You haven't done that one yet? No. There you it's go. Good killer clowns. Why not? It's, it's like one of my all-time favorite clowns movies. And killer clowns. You know, I've only seen it one time, and it was a commentary. <laughs> That's, that's a good show. Those are all good movies. Man, the Blu-rays on Killer Clowns look so fucking good, man. The colors just pop they in those should. things, man. They, it's a really colorful film, and it looks really damn good. It, it was super what low budget. And pies. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Shoot, I might have to buy it. I've only seen it one time, and when I saw it, I was doing a commentary. How the hell so did I, I get really clowns? <laughs> yeah. Dude, honestly, that movie, I thought it was going to be like way more like just cheesy, stupid goofiness. Correct. That's why I skipped it. It's a great movie. They I only seen it once too, Dave. You're like, I skipped it because it looked stupid. And it was great. And it's like, well, right I, now, I don't know how. Uh, the hold on, though. How great is it? I haven't watched it since I watched it on that commentary. Even then, I still have the same feel. Like, yeah, I remember a couple good scenes, but I, I, I haven't bought it or thought to watch it. You'll, since. You'll, love, uh, you'll love Don Vernon in it. Oh, it's so much fun, man. It's got so much fun characters. They're going away for a long time. <laughs> there's so many cool Develop. props and sets and stuff that they made for that. Like, there's a lot of cool things that are going on. Yeah, I agree with that. There were cool sets and props for sure. Yeah. I remember that part. Yeah, that fuck shadow puppets nightmare fuel, dude. The T Rex <laughs> shadow puppet. Right. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, good That's actually the scene that I always think about when I think of that movie. Hmm. All right. Well. I don't think I have anything else for the intro. It is the week after Halloween. I was going to ask what people did, but that conversation will probably go on for like an hour or so. Unless anyone did. I didn't do anything special. Carved pumpkins and watched movies. That's Actually, pretty much what I did. Yeah, I just watched movies all day. Yeah. I literally just up. sat around and I watched like seven movies on Halloween. It was crazy. Wow. I gave out a bunch of candy because I my foot's messed up, so I, I couldn't. And I decided I was going to do something new. And I'm glad I did this because I'm going to do it for eternity now. Because I get a lot of kids in my neighborhood. But <laughs> check it. I went into the garage, and I set up a chair, and I brought a, a, a heater with me, and I brought music with me. And I had all the candy there. I was just chilling all night long. And the kids were coming up as I was in you know in the front of the garage. They just walked up the driveway. This way I don't have to deal with the freaking the doorbell, mm-hmm. the doorbell. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I got yeah, cats. You're right, you're right. I got a fucking dog. It's a pain in the – getting up every – and try to watch a movie during trick or treat hours. Forget about it. You're right. pausing at every freaking Only five two minutes. hours. You'd be all right. Fuck it. Yeah, but still, you know what I mean. I, I yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's all right. Might as well just sit in the fucking garage. Why Word. get up every ten seconds, dude? And that's what I did. And I sat in there for like fucking three hours. And I, I had a playlist made. It's about five hours worth of freaking horror songs and, and shit like that. And I, you know, so I just sat there and I listened and did all that shit. And I gave out so much fucking. I had who had the best? I had about. I don't even know. I know a couple kids had that alien thing, which I thought was cool. And there was a, a, a kid at a jigsaw, which looked fucking great. Um, but I was just, you know, I was more about passing out the candy because I got full-size bars it, and I had 150 kids. So I was just about spending money and fucking, you know, yeah, dude, making dude. the kids day. Man, I, miss I don't get days. any trick or treat. I don't get anywhere I live. Dude, dude I bought one long. time I bought like 32 full-size candy bars and like three bags of candy to pass out. I had zero kids two day, two years in a row. I'm right on a main road. All right. If one kid would have walked up at seven o'clock out of like, here's a box of full-size <laughs> candy bars, bro. <laughs> wow. Well, dude, bars. <laughs> <laughs> I live in a neighborhood. I live in like a, one of those neighborhoods that everybody comes to in fucking cars and shit, and they pull up and they park here. And because it's like a, it's like a, a big neighborhood, but it's like what do you call it? It's like a, like, almost like saying it's like one giant cul-de-sac. Yeah. So there's no like traffic going back and forth. So one street kind of connects to the well, other. Behind but, is a great, po- a yeah. great neighborhood. It's uh, the kids go around that neighborhood. But why are they gonna walk to the main road? Like it's right there. You know what I mean? I'm like two houses yeah. in, but like it's dangerous. You know, I'm right on a main road. For the kids, yeah. they don't want to get up there. And like behind me is a perfectly good neighborhood, like a nice neighborhood with a bunch of kids. But I can't fucking, you yeah, know what I mean? Live, I live in a nice neighborhood too, and we have quite a few kids. It's just where my house is located. We're kind of like off in the, in the corner comes. next to a pathway, but it's, we have, it's just the way that it's set up. But we only had seven kids this year, which is so crazy. Wow. No one ever comes to the house. Damn. And like I bought tons and tons of candy and shit like that. I got like seven kids. It was fucking crazy. So I just sat around and watched movies all day. I started with Hack a Lantern. I think it was like noon. I popped in Ooh. Hackle Lantern. I love that. And then I went to Night of the Demons. Um, the Good choice. The original. Love both those movies. Yeah, that remake is, is uh, 
yeah. whatever. And then I hadn't watched the uh, the 4K of Flesh Eater yet, so I popped that in. Still love Flesh Eater. Oh, it's great. It looks great, don't it? It does. It does, yeah. Um, and then uh, I watched the Funhouse Massacre, which I hadn't seen in years. Um, I didn't still, watch that one. I, I think it's still pretty fun, man. I actually kind of like it. Um, and then that's when I watched Terrifier 2. Uh, which was hmm. in fucking sanity. Nice. <laughs> it was just blowing my mind. And then I ended the, oh, and then I watched Hellbent, which, have you guys seen Hellbent before? It's the gay slasher. Is it the gay slasher? Yeah, the I gay slasher. Seen. It's been years, but yeah. That movie needs a fucking Blu-ray because is the good? DVD is, good. is so ugly looking, man. It is, is that so, an Anchor Bay DVD? No, it's not. No. It's like some cheap company. It's, an, it's a legit DVD, but it just looks terrible. Like this movie could be cleaned up so well. Um, it's, it's a fun movie though. It's different. Um, and then uh, I ended my night with uh, the Scooby Doo and Kiss Rock and Roll Mystery. I saw that. <laughs> I always watch Scooby Doo stuff on Halloween for some. We did some light man at the end. Yeah. So, so no Halloween, yeah. nothing from the franchise, huh? On the 29th, I watch Halloween three. I watch Halloween three every year. Oh, I, I did watch Halloween. on the night of. <laughs> I did watch Halloween uh, three. I well, think on e- Halloween. Every one of these too. movies, Dude, the four K is awesome. By the way, four K. The four K. The four K of Halloween twice. three is the best of the. Yep. I watched it twice. Of all of them. Yeah. yeah. Every movie I watched on Halloween was a movie based on Halloween, though. So. Ah, oh, nice, dude. dude right. Look at look at me though. Look at me actually getting into traditions, watching Halloween three on Halloween for once. Yeah. See, I do I it watched, every year now. I watch three, and then I watch one, and then two. That's what I, I watched. Do. Um. I watched five of the Halloweens, one through five, throughout Jeez. the month of October. Oh, okay, right. I watched I've, one, two, and three in that month of October. That's good for you. And then on on actual Halloween, it's Halloween ends watched, and Halloween ends too. Oh, of on, course. Hmm. On actual oh, yeah. Halloween, I didn't have as much time, but me and Carly watched uh, Curse of the Blair Witch, which was like the faux documentary on mm-hmm. the Sci Fi Channel, and yeah. then we watched Blair Witch, and then when I went home, I watched Halloween Five. What would possess you to watch wow. Halloween Five? Ugh. Yeah, it was just next up in the series. So <laughs> I, I, yeah. I did go out on the weekend though, on Halloween weekend, the weekend before. Right. What I got dressed up on, I think, would it be Saturday? Yeah, I did. I mean, I, I guess I got drunk. I guess in reality, I watched a lot. I mean, I guess I watched Halloween ends, uh, Halloween Three, but then I also watched Satan's Little Helper because I did a review for that, and Midnight Hour Jacko mm-hmm. and Hellfest. Of course, we did on on the podcast. Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. I ended up watching a lot of Halloween based movies during the holidays. I uh, during wanted October, to get so. to Cemetery of Terror, but oh, yeah. I, I didn't up into it. Did you watch the other one yet? Did you watch Grave Robbers, JP? No, I haven't. Oh, that one's fun too. Yeah, just as good as Cemetery it, Terror. It is, man. It's so much fun. Yeah, I Dude, do. I finally you. showed my daughter Rob Zombie's Halloween because she's seen every like, Halloween movie with me. I never sat down and watched Rob Zombie's with her because I didn't think I'd be comfortable watching those with her. But now she's 16, <laughs> and like I've said many times on my on Exploding Heads, I've watched um, what do you call it with her? And after watching that show, anything goes. So uh, Euphoria, Dude. amazing show by the way. But after her and I got through that experience of watching something like that together, yes, we're still a little bit uncomfortable. It's natural. <laughs> but I'm like, you know what? Okay, now let's watch Rob Zombie's Halloween. So I showed it to her, and this is the best part. 10 minutes into the movie and you know all that crazy stuff at the beginning the way it starts off yeah. you know I'm all broken up here bitch and you know everything going on she looks at me and she goes I love Rob Zombie's movies she told me <laughs> yes <laughs> I know right yeah. I'm like yeah well, did you watch the theatrical version that's the better version of the first one because well, they have I, the I watched stage. the uncut and I liked the theatrical well, I shouldn't say I like the theatrical, but I like the escape in the theatrical. Yeah, movie. me but too. That's the best thing. Find the fucking two, yes, dude. A combination. It would be the well, best. Just, just take out the rape scene and put in the prison escape. Right. But here's the best part about the rape scene, Danny Trejo after. I was good to you, Mikey. That's not in the theatrical version? No. How could it be when he escapes another way? No, it's not in the theatrical. No, yeah, it's it, not in the, the theatrical. Yeah, because that part's so funny. He's like, I was good to you, Mikey. Yeah. Yes. Was, that's a pretty good impression <laughs> of uh, Danny Trejo. Thing. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> he said it just like him. I was good to you, Mikey. I was good to you, Mikey. I was good to you, Mikey. Did we laugh about that before? Didn't we laugh like 10 minutes about that before last time, Daisy? Yeah. It's <laughs> oh amazing, dude. That's a really so, good impression. It's so funny. That, that kill in that movie, that scene, and of course the epic scene in part two when the nurse gets her... <laughs> fucking next flight and walks away and then screams Maybe like 30 seconds later <laughs> winning actress octavia right. spencer yes what's she, she doing so funny what's she doing in that so to, oh. to 
comment on what you just said, Dave, with a little story of my own. So when we went and seen Halloween Ends, uh, Carly's mom came with us, uh, and Ooh. she was <laughs> she was talking about <laughs> when Rob Zombie's Halloween came out, and Carly was like ten or something. <laughs> And she took her to see it, and she was like, she was like mortified. She she felt so awkward. And I bet she took her oh. kid to see it. Fucking for sure. Oh it was my so gosh. funny. I was laughing. Well, how are you gonna know? Seriously, dude, isn't it uncomfortable though? Any time with a parent at any age, like me and my father went to see the Friday the Thirteenth fucking remake. And whatever year that was, 2009, Nine. whatever the hell. 2000. And all those sex scenes that are going on. And I'm a grown man and my father's a grown man. But I still felt a little bit awkward watching well, those fucking You felt scenes. awkward because you reached over and grabbed his leg, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and he I cut a know. hole in the popcorn. Yeah, I was going to say that. Oh, <laughs> I don't feel awkward. Extra butter. With, extra butter. Like, I wouldn't feel awkward <laughs> with my mom. I just could be. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh. yeah. yeah, I can't ever get comfortable with things like that with no, my it's parents. Weird. It's weird. Yeah, it is weird. And but like I said, because I've seen Euphoria with my daughter and that fucking series goes places, we've crossed over that freaking boundary now. And yes, the two of us, we kind of have a way where when something like that happens on the screen, uh, sometimes I just go in the kitchen for a second and grab something. It's just that weird, makes it even but, more fucking awkward. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing? Her. I just got to use the bathroom real quick. Don't worry about me. Worry about the movie. Watch the movie. Using the bathroom. Well, it depends on where it goes. If it was my son, it wouldn't make a difference. But it's my daughter, and it's just a little bit. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird being a parent. It doesn't bother me. Well, you don't have a daughter. If you did, you might no, feel I'm different. No, I'm saying with like my mom or... Or something. Never bought So it. you'd watch the Friday the 13th remake with your mom fucking next to I think I've you? watched it with my grandma. Really? Your tits are still and all that shit and yeah. you're okay with it? I just watch. wearing your underwear, watching it in I, your underwear. I got a very comfortable relationship with my grandma and my mom. I Nothing is going to embarrass me in front of my fucking mom with all the shit That's I've cool. been through. <laughs> Fair enough. But, okay. Um, my grandfather, though, that's where it gets awkward. For some reason. Oh, really? What is he like? Conservative and serious and shit? Not, not really. It's just I don't know. It's just old school. Me. <laughs> huh? Yeah. No, I mean nothing. Nothing. Not really. I don't know. It's just maybe when I was younger, he was more conservative. But now, I feel just as awkward, and he's definitely like mellowed out a ton. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you spend most of your time with him? Uh. Out of everybody, like adult in my family, yeah. Yeah. Well, there, there's your answer. See, there you go. It's like a, it's a father figure situation, and you were <clears> the closest <throat> with them, so that makes perfect sense. Possibly. See? I'm an amateur psychologist. My wife tells <laughs> me that all the fucking time. <laughs> <clears throat> I guess we should probably. Yeah. Sorry. I was just waiting for you guys to finish up. Talking you got about. nothing on that mood? You got your kid. You watch fucking tons of movies. I figured there's yeah, something. Yeah, he does. No, he he doesn't have any interest in anything. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't he, I've come to the conclusion he hates he hates all movies except for comedies. <laughs> so if you ever look, look at my letterbox and it'll be like a list of like 400 horror films and then one random comedy is probably because I watched that with him. Like the other night I watched Step Brothers with him. And that's the only shitty he'll ever enjoy. He won't sit down and watch anything. It's tough. Same thing with my daughter. Like, I had to fucking, to get her to watch that movie. And again, she watched um, Pearl with me the other day for her second time, by the way. So she likes it. Oh, wait, you're telling me that Scarecrow scene was not fucking awkward? It was the first time at the theater. The second time on the couch, we just kind of laughed about it. Hmm. But but yeah. I feel like that's way more awkward than. Fucking- yeah, but it's ridiculous at the same time because we've already seen it. the first time it was at the theater. The second time we knew it was coming, and you know I think we talked during it. You know what I mean? We just we, we work ways around it that we're yeah. smarter than two of us in that way. Where I was just- fucking feeling awkward in the theater during that. I was with Carly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm married. <laughs> that fucking movie. But Luke yeah, it hasn't seen it. it. Hasn't seen it. I'm sorry, but movies, I haven't seen it either yet. No, I it's like a once a, maybe once a month. I can get her to sit down and just watch one 
a horror movie with me, just one. When my wife's around, she'll watch anything we put on the screen. It's a family thing. She's excited. But if mm-hmm. it's just her and I, for me to get her to come out of her fucking bedroom, I'm with you. She's not into anything except the shit she's into. But, right. you know, my wife kind of promotes it. So I get, I like I said, maybe once, maybe twice a month, she'll sit and she'll watch a movie with just me. So I can't even get him to watch like action movies. He just doesn't like them. He's just like, no. If it's not stupid too. funny, like he just no, he just doesn't like any of it. Doesn't like anything. Yeah, but that'll change. You know that will. I gotta yeah. piss. All right. Yeah. Well, we're done the intro anyways. So, um, yeah, that's gonna be it for that. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get into some Fulci Part Three in a minute. Check you guys out. Yo, who this? Yo, Modes, it's your boy, the ill-mented funky child, calling you to remind you that the featured reviews on this episode contain spoilers. Aw, oh, yeah, man, that's right, brother. Thanks for the heads up, playa. Now go back to being an unproductive asshole. Fuck you. I tell your listeners to stop being so dumb, silly, sensitive. Yeah. And now, our feature presentation. All right, so getting into the featured reviews here on episode 229, Lucio Fulci 3, Italian Horror Month, 8 or 9. I don't know what it is. Um, It's 8. So it's 8. Apparently it's 8. All right, so we're going to take it back to 1971 uh, with a film called A Lizard in a Woman's Skin, of course, directed by Fulci. Uh, This movie actually was, I believe, his second giallo-esque film that he had done um have you guys ever seen perversion story before it was a film that he did about two years before this one also with john surreal in it who's in the movie as well yeah exactly um so perversion story which is also known as uh one on top of the other uh it came out 1969 um re-released in america as perversion story um severin put out the dvd years ago mondo macabro recently put out the blu-ray which is actually a longer version of it so i'd note that it's a really good movie i think it's very underrated people never talk about perversion story from Fulci. um but anyways the point is that was kind of his first film into uh the giallo um genre and then he came out with um this a lizard in woman's skin 1971 synopsis the politically unhinged daughter of a british politician is accused of killing her hagnostic neighbor (laughs) i like the word hagnostic neighbor after she witnesses the murder in a dream is it hedonistic or agnostic no it's it's hedonistic hedonistic okay yeah h-e-d oh yeah hedonistic or agnostic agnostic either i guess agnostic hedonistic I, I H-E-D, saw it as hedonistic. Right? It's hedonistic. Yeah, it I've never even heard yeah. that. I've never heard that pronunciation of that before. I know what the word means, but I. I oh, it's just it must be different pronunciation because our countries in, in our it, country it's hedonistic. Oh, okay, totally. It probably is right. It probably totally is. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, okay. that's kind of like Z and Z, right? Exactly. Z is the stupidest shit ever. Don't yeah, say that. Well, it's just the way they say it. <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> we've, 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 we've had this conversation just, so many chill. times. It's funny because Canadians with the Z thing, but like when I was growing up, it was Z. And it got changed to Z what? later on. Yeah. Like w- early Sesame Street and shit like that was well, Z. That's because yeah, I used to see Z when I was a kid. Stupid. Yeah. Like I always said Z. That's why when I say Z, it, just to piss off JP. And like, cause I, I never grew up like that with Z. So they, they stopped do doing Zed, it? Zed was dead. They say Zed in the UK. Oh, everything's Zed changed. Zed was dead. Pulp fiction line. I was about to do it. Zed is dead. Who's yeah. Zed? <laughs> Zed is dead. Who's motorcycle? Not a motorcycle, baby. It's a chopper. <laughs> Who's chopper is this? Zed. Who's Zed? Who's Zed? Zed? Zed's dead. Zed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always do that too, man. <laughs> Every time I think it's Zed, I always think it's Zed's dead. All right, so who here has seen Lizard and Woman's Skin before? Me. JP, um, Dave? I saw it in the th- uh, at the drive-in oh. two years ago oh, nice. for the first time. Cool. But was it a different version of this? I wonder if it was. So... I was going to get to that. I've owned it for a few years. It's I, I didn't break the fucking seal until I watched it now. Okay, so if you so Shriek Show put out a DVD years, I think a couple companies put it out. It's actually a shorter version. 
They have um, two DVDs. Street Show had two, one longer and one shorter. Right, right. And then, so, and I think the version that Mondo put out Mondo. is like the full, full version. I think the Mondo is the version to get. Is the one to get. It's like the full. I think there might have been a scene missing out of the longer version of Street Show. There's something going, there's like, there's different versions, whatever it is. But the Mondo Blu-ray is the one to get. It's the full version of the film. It's totally uncut. It's not like the other ones were cut. It was just a different version of the film. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that they probably showed this version because I don't remember anything being different. I actually can't remember what the differences are, to be honest, but it is like 10 minutes. It's like (laughs) 10 minute difference, though. That's the crazy thing. Oh, shit. Yeah, dude. And that's why I wanted to really stress that because I know, Dave, this was the first time you watched it. So I was kind of curious on what version you watched. Even though I can't really, I never looked it up. I mean, sometimes you I'll can go to right the, now. Uh, how, can, how long is it? It's right on my shelf here. I'll look right now and see. I think go the ahead. Shriek to the original version that I seen back in the day was like a 95 minute version. This one's like 105. This, one was like, this one's yeah, like 144, 145. Yeah, it's about 10 minutes difference. Nine or 10 minutes difference between like the original one that most of us had seen back in the day. And the first time I'd seen this version was when Mondo put out the Blu-ray in 2015. And I hadn't watched this movie since Damn, 15. So it's been already? seven, it'd been seven years since I, since Jesus. I watched it. And I, I was like watching it going, uh, I couldn't remember it. It was crazy. So, I mean, I remembered certain things about the film, but yeah, I remembered all the plot twists and I remembered, uh, Florinda Balkan. You just don't forget her. No, no, you can't. She's a great actress. Yeah. My yeah, Blu-ray's actually, upstairs. In terms of the, in terms of well, if you have a Blu-ray, it's probably the Mondo one. Oh yeah, yeah, it's Blue. the Mondo. Oh yeah, yeah, I only have Blu-rays. Yeah, the, it's a Blu-ray. It's it, it's all the same version. We watch the same movie. Okay. Um, the this particular trilogy of Fauci films, I feel like work really well together, and I just kind of randomly picked them because I I'd never seen the Psychic, and they're all around the same time too. But. I think perversion story would have fit a little bit better than the psychic but i think the psychic is a better movie personally for me Mm -hmm. yeah i just think that like in terms of like the writing and and tom horsball said this on my post too uh, i feel like it's i actually didn't realize that fulci like made movies that were like this (laughs) well written in terms of like because a lot of the stuff i've seen is more of like the gory like Mm-hmm. zombie and shit you know well, after zombie he, he a, got his you know he got his he found his niche and after that he just embraced it and he, he was popular for that but before Fulci was he did the movies at the time he was a kind of a journeyman but his movies were always really well done well and he had a whole huge career before some of these are personal i think yeah. all three of these movies have a lot of personal touches to them which yeah, some of his other stuff doesn't these are, they're, they're all, all very similar they're all similar in like the way they're written and stuff you can tell Fulci had a hand in the stories and stuff and um, yeah, so he, Keddie, he so Keddie from, wrote a um, part of the psychic, though, didn't he? Yeah, I think the psychic is actually based on. Is it not? Well, ba- wrote it too. Yeah, I think I thought there was a source material for it too. I think there actually is a. It's based off a novel or a story or something like that. Where the version that Fulci eventually came out with, like the story that they worked on, is like totally different. There's there's really nothing from the book in there at all. It's like totally different. That's about right. Yeah. So th- their version is like not really an adaptation of the original story. It's kind of like their own thing. So, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, you can tell like, you know, between a uh, perversion story and lizard woman's skin and, and duckling and uh, so, like, the, they're all very Fulci esque, right? They're all kind of written very, very similar. Where he I comes- don't see it as much with perversion story. That one doesn't do much for me. And comp- I like it. I think it's a good movie, but I don't see the personal touch to it, but I've only seen perversion story one time. So. Oh, really? No, mm-hmm. totally. Like I just watched, I watched it again this week purposely and yeah. watching that movie and then watching these three, basically <laughs> all in a row. You're like, Oh yeah, you can see where Fulci yeah. like his twists and turns and in certain aspects of the, of the narrative within well, perversion story are totally similar. I would do a perversion story the um, kind of the idea that you know authority is a wrongly conf- can can uh, basically persecuted person. Right. And the authority is wrong. So I would go with that because I feel like these three movies, well, the first two in general have like almost anti. I feel like I feel like an anti-authoritarian thing in Fulci when I watch a lot of his movies. Definitely an anti-superstition, anti-religion, but from a point of view where he understands it and is part of it. Right. Especially in the second film. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but, Exactly. Um, yeah, and plus, you know, John Sorrell, he's, you know, what you mentioned, he's in Perversion Story too. So there's that connection here. There's like all these like little connections, which which is very common in Italian films. So you always see the same actors and actresses and stuff in, in the films and stuff. And, you know, it carries over. S- same with uh, Florinda Balkan. 
Um, we also got Anita uh, Stringberg in here, Stringberg, and then who yeah. else? and Stanley <clears throat> Baker, which is a good get because he was a very famous British actor at the time. Right. And this movie takes place in Britain, so yeah. Yeah, so put Stanley Baker in there. You get I bet this movie did pretty well, to be honest. You also have two like identical like dummy cliff deaths. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. In, the, in the second two. Oh, between like, duck. Oh, it's it's funny when you watch Duckling, and then you pop in the psychic like I, like I did last night. It was five minutes later, and it's like watching a replay, but it's not. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's like right. hilarious to one watch. One is at the one's at the one part of the movie, and the other one's at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, one ends and then one starts, and you're like, really? It's <laughs> it's funny because I don't think I've ever watched the psychic right after Duckling before, and then just like, holy shit, that's really funny. It's just a hilarious oh. way to transition itself um to be honest, want to start modes? um okay so let's start with dave um your thoughts Dave's on team. yeah since you haven't seen it before what are your thoughts on a lizard in woman's skin well i do like a giallo of course um the thing with me and fulci is and you know as we go through this show you'll you'll, you'll see more of what i'm saying i all the fulci movies i've seen that weren't Gates of Hell trilogy, I've kind of had the same feeling on. I've liked them all. I've liked them all. I have, I'm have. i not head over heels. Um, I prefer everything in the Gates of Hell trilogy to the to the Gialli. It's just the way it is with me. But Is that a preference in, in film type? You, you prefer more of the, <laughs> you know, the supernatural zombie, whatever he's doing in that Gates of Hell trilogy uh, versus I'm definitely a mystery thriller slash this, Giallo? Uh, I don't know. I, I can. Here's what it is. These movies and a lot of early '70s stuff and a lot of see when it comes to it, when it comes to Gialli, and I've said this for years. I love our Genos and everything else for me are fine, but to me, all the great ones have been the Argento ones. The other ones, I don't know if it's Argento style and the way he writes characters is different or something, but. A lot of these 70s movies and a lot of these er- early ones, they and this happens in every Fulci movie except Gates of Hell. I all, There are points in the movie where I check out. There just seems to be an awful lot of dialogue in these movies. And if I'm not glued to the screen, I, I tend to miss things. And this may just be a problem <clears throat> for me. And when I say a problem, I mean it that way. Like it's... It's the same reason I can't keep up with action movies. It's an ADHD thing, and if I'm, I'm not fully invested in something, and there is a ton of dialogue, and I drift off at any time during it, it's hard for me to come back. And, and this happens sometimes. And I just honestly think it's not the fault of the movie. I'll accept that it's it just may be me. But this movie, it it was. <clears throat> I I enjoyed let, let me, it. It was kind of Hitchcockian in a way with with the you know the murder mystery and all that stuff. Um, but some of the dialogue I thought went on a little longer than it had to. Hmm. And that's the funny thing. I have no problem with Hitchcock movies. So why should I have a problem with seventies movies like this? I don't know. I honestly don't, don't know what the answer is to that. But I did enjoy it. I liked the story. I'm glad it didn't go where I thought it was going to go because I thought it was going to be too obvious at one point. I think I even mentioned it to you guys in the chat. I was like, we, I hope we doing spoilers, it. right? Yeah, we. I, I mean, we kind of have to talk. You thought I mean, John Surreal was the the killer, but we won't try to like completely the, the give because I feel yeah, like yeah, some people yeah. haven't seen these movies. You know, right? I wasn't going to say that. <clears throat> yeah, I wasn't going to go so, off on. Well, to be honest, when I first watched this, and I, okay, I get the whole dialogue. See, the thing is with me, like I, the, one of the reasons why I like Chiali so much is because, you know, I always find the dialogue you really need to pay attention to it sometimes because sometimes yes. there's kind of hints in throughout <laughs> that, and 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 these movies do get a little bit talky because you need that. That's part of the that's how the narrative progresses itself, right? Is through the talk, the talking, and, and you know, certain situations and stuff. When I first watched yeah. this movie. I actually thought the killer was going to be um, uh, Carol's father because the way this movie sets itself, I mean, as we know, the opening scene in the film is very, is, um, is kind of the end result, (laughs) right? It's like, it's kind of interesting, but I've, and when you're watching a movie like this, you're like thinking to yourself going, fuck man. I mean, the killer is way too obvious to be, but I think that's what makes this movie so brilliant in the end. Well, so let it's me how it's t- constructed, t- how it's constructed because it's a mind trip. Right. And like I've mentioned so many times about movies where 
I don't really care for movies with dream sequences in them unless they have to do with dreams, hence Nightmare on Elm Street and, you know, other movies that have to do with dreams themselves. Now, this one's kind of cool because it starts out with a dream sequence and then it gets into the psychology of breaking down dreams with her psychologist and stuff like that and understanding dreams. And then it kind of flips back and it gets you as the viewer really contemplating what is really going on. Is this real? Is this reality? Is this fake? Is she, is something else going on? And they do throw a lot of left, left turns in this film. Like, you know, how they introduce the husband that he's cheating and stuff, which, you know, obviously because that opens up the floodgates for suspects, which that's why we thought it was the father was a killer in this film, because, you know, he's obviously very protective of his daughter. He wants to, you know, kind of prove her innocence and things like that. You can tell that he has a little bit of a hard on for the, for the husband and stuff. And, you know, there's all these kind of angles. I think there's a lot of interesting things that are happening in this film, but um, I really like the psychology of it. It kind of gets into it, but I think it's very daring what Fulci did with this narrative because it starts out with one thing and, it, and where it ends, as we know, and you're like, oh, well, that's fucking crazy because it's very diabolic. The story is super, super diabolic. There's all these little things with, oh, she wrote down the dreams. Now he could have ripped off the dreams from this and that. And there's all these little elements in this film that I think are really awesome. I think it's really well done, to be honest. So. Let, let me touch on a few things first and, and now like Parker go. So what Dave was saying about like the whole like Giallo thing with, where like paying attention and, and mm-hmm. him like, losing interest and stuff like that. I think that is a very, 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 very common um, feeling. Uh, And I had it a lot, too, when I first started watching these because they are are sort of an acquired taste because they're not like American films. They skip things a lot like they skip. Like, here's an example, right, that I was just thinking of. JP, let me stop you there. We've discussed this before on the podcast and we've we've kind of the understanding that it's an Italian filmmaking style, right? They they don't try to do they don't try to spoon feed you every little thing. And I kind of like that because if you're not hip to watching these type of movies, I can see where you might check out or get confused or just be completely not really caring for it that much but like once you become someone like once you've kind of immersed yourself in the gialli uh, world you become one with the style of filmmaking and you really understand that like you're you're almost like reading between the lines when it comes to giallis and, and stuff like that like i've watched these movies so many damn times that like I, I, there's probably things I'm still not picking up on because it's like, you know, all these type of movies, there's so much going on, right? There's so many little well, antidotes and all these little things within the, but I love movies that are very dialogue driven as long as it's interesting. And it, and I feel like in this movie, there's so many little things that are happening constantly through the movie that keep you constantly. You, you, my mind is just, is ticking. It's ticking and ticking and ticking. And it's like, I, I find that very interesting, but that's me personally. Right. Yeah, so, dude, it's like it's a puzzle to me. I yeah. don't understand why it, I, why I can watch Hitchcock in Argento. And it's not different. Have it's different because Argento really kind of perfected the Giallo in a way too. So that's that's a little bit different, especially in in like Tenebrae and stuff. But to go back to what I was saying, like here's an example. I was trying to think of this when I was watching these too. And um, in the second film, Don't Torture a Duckling, this scene where they're interviewing Giuseppe or whatever his name is, the the, the the backwards dude who they think he's the child murderer and stuff. And then it literally just cuts them digging up a a grave and they never say how they got there, how they figured out to to go. But they explain it later. They explain it later. And the police department says that he he was dumb and he, he tried to um, basically blackmail them for money. They explain all that. But how did they know to go there to find the body? Because he knew where the body was. Because he he found the body. They tell you he found the body. Yeah. Because obviously he led them to the body. He's in that. Right, right, right. I agree with you. You don't need to see that. That's common sense. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, what I'm just I'm just trying to say here that if you're you have to fill in the blanks a little bit. It's every like, movie though. What's that? Every movie. In a sense, well, you, see, you have like to do that in action movies too. With with these, I, I, I would say so in all these other two in the Psychic and Lizard, but not Don't Torture a Duckling. I think Don't Torture a Duckling is the most straightforward, very obvious movie of the bunch. I don't think there's anything like that in Don't Torture a Duckling. That's the one I'm the most familiar with. That's one of my all-time favorite movies. So, But as far as Lizard, I see exactly what you guys are talking about. Lizard has some disconnects, and a lot of uh, Giallos have major disconnects, and some of them are very sloppy. Let's not act like they're not sloppy. Right. There's some shitty-ass fucking Jolly that make literally no fucking logical of course, sense. Of course. I, I totally so agree with that. There, just, but, let me finish I'm my sorry, point real quick. I understand what you're saying. They are, they're not super easy to pay attention to sometimes. I'm not right. trying to get you, but I'm I, saying, I I'm saying that the more you watch them – 
the more that stuff doesn't bother you and you kind of and you kind of you train your brain to sort of like think the way that it actually is is like you you know where it's going so your your brain automatically like connects the bridge that's not the that's not yellow cinema that's 70s cinema yeah I feel like it's. I, I personally feel like it's a lot more in GL, and it's like one of the biggest issues I had with them when I first started watching them. And I feel like that issue has like com- very much subsided. I think, and I never really got that feeling in some of these American cinema. The, 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 the I get scene, it there, just not as much. When he, he cuts to him being interviewed, and then they cut to the body, and then they say, like, like I don't understand any disconnect there for me. No, like, I, don't th- I don't think there is any saying, other kid. I didn't kill this kid, and then all of a sudden they're there with the body, and well, you're like, okay, body. well, so he so – he, is taking them to the body now or they just they ended up yeah finding well, he, he, it he, like, he told he basically confessed that he knew where it was because he was the one that buried it there and he's obviously see his idea is that no if he tells him he he's basically telling the police that he didn't kill the he didn't kill the kid he just buried it that's his way of trying to get out of it so he knows where it is and stuff like that yeah, he's also ransom for the money because he's uh, he's yeah, slow well, he's right. a, he's yeah, a dumb that is yeah. what happened and they explain but that I'm away saying in the moment when you're watching it you don't know that. They don't want you to know for sure if he killed him or not. He's a red herring. Every character in the movie in that movie. We're talking to review in the wrong movie here. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, the whole it's fucking the, the whole uh, Florina Block and uh, character in the movie is like a total red herring too. I, 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 it's not don't touch duckling review, is it? But but no. okay, lizard in the woman's skin. I think that the cool thing about this one, where you guys say we're talking about like the uh, do you. Um, you, you know who who's the killer like what what what's going to be the reveal and stuff even if you do come to the conclusion that the killer is the killer you have n- there's no way you could fi- think of why it happened like why that person is the killer or also like the reason right, that right. the the confession basically like the whole way everything works because there's no real way to figure that, that out dude i and it's actually really cool and especially when that scene exactly. where you see what actually happened and then the character looks up and the, the thing, the two things you see up there, mm-hmm. that's actually like really fucking cool. No, I like that whole angle, angle of the, of the witnesses that aren't witnesses. Right. Right. Yeah. That yeah, is cool. brilliant. It's, it's such really a, it's neat. such a good like, idea. It's so you need, it's such a good idea. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about in this movie. There's so many like little antidotes and like, like, like you said, even if you conclude, who you think the killer is and when it gets concluded you're like okay but then the reasoning behind it and like why it always made i always made myself laugh with this one could you imagine the reason would be is just because they were being too loud next door <laughs> like that's well, fucking reason they're just like they're always partying i'm gonna go and kill her you know it's like so fucking extreme have you guys ever seen so the, the things that have you guys ever seen the movie chop watching. which one okay. chop i've not yeah. seen chop that's will keenan now right yeah oh my god dude the reasoning behind the whole movie is lol to the fucking 20th degree funny man it's the funniest fucking reveal in, in cinema history and the whole movie is like serious <laughs> fucking crazy dude it's so awesome but it always reminded me of like and that's what i always said about this movie it's it's very daring to do the narrative the way it is but then have this really cool reasoning behind it and 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 just the execution of where they get there i like all the the um the psychoanalysis of you know the dreams and things like that and like all those little anecdotes. i think there's a lot of cool things that are happening I in agree. this film i think there's a lot it, of really cool things the reason why she starts discussing these dreams in that way is interesting right yeah. because yeah like she thinks that one thing's going to happen. So she's like trying to lay a nest to like get out of it. You know what I mean? And then it ends up if she just didn't do anything, everything would have been fine, you know? Right. So it's like once the, the dreams actually that her way to get out of it actually is what does her in. Mm hmm. Right. I mean, the things that I like about the movie in general are, are the things that we were like you're touching on, but we haven't really discussed is is kind of just the themes and the very Fulci esque idea that we have, you know, the ultra rich politicians who are the ones who are actually worse than the hippies next door. We have this sexual repression that a character has towards another character that causes them to kill to lash out. And the way that this character tries to cover up is absolutely brilliant. You don't know how much is consciously they're doing it or subconsciously they're doing it. The reveal is, is very intelligent, and mm-hmm. it's just they 
throw a lot of herrings at it, but they show you the seedy underworld within the rich. And it's also a movie where you have the rich meeting the poor. You have these counterculture meeting the kind of elite of society, the upper crust meeting the hippies, which is a nice mm-hmm. angle. Uh, yeah. It's a little late in 71, but obviously this idea was probably cooked up in the late 60s. This movie's but still very 60s. There. It's very 60s so, feeling. It's very psychedelic. Yeah, you have yeah, all these very 60s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have all these kind of unique ideas and stuff like that, which is very much a faulty kind of like the people that actually end up being the the villains are the rich people, right. um, the people that run society. And it, it, that's very interesting in a lot of ways, too. It's also very sexually explicit for the time. Kind of shocking. Did not remember the dream scene being so sexually explicit. Kind of took me back for a second. Um, and we also have effects by Carlo Rambaldi. Fultz, you got in trouble for that dog effect, of course. You know, they thought it was a real dog. Um, the bat, not so very, not as convincing as the dog, right? Oh, well, that bird, it was ridiculous. <laughs> it looked like fucking Rodan or fucking Q yeah. the Winged Serpent. Dude, that I always think it, I always think Q the Winged Serpent in that, man. I always think the same right? thing, but I think it's pretty That's funny that he had to go to court to fucking prove that those weren't real dogs. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's so 70s. It's so 70s. Too. Yeah, I know. I just don't think they like Fulci very much. <laughs> I don't think people understand editing so much. Like when it comes to duckling, we'll get to that in a minute. But like that, that yeah. shit. We makes were no also sense talking about this earlier in the chat. Is like cinema goers were similar to pro wrestling fans of the seventies. Like they were just very gullible and didn't understand how anything worked and just right. thought like it's on screen, it's real. <laughs> but you got to remember, yeah, back, yeah, in yeah. The, back in those days, we also weren't hip to. I mean, there wasn't a lot of film and, and things like that showing like you just you yeah, there were, wasn't you, like you didn't know how things were made yeah you did curtain. we just we have the knowledge now of how everything is and stuff and it, whether you were involved in it or you just watch a lot of stuff right you just didn't have that knowledge back in those days but i guess it yeah now it sense. seems so obvious but yeah. like back then you're like well that's what i'm saying about the editing especially when duckling i mean right <laughs> it's right. clear it's clear as fucking day right yeah. and but, i want to say so one thing people do scenes like that sense <clears> like, know that how they do it that it's obvious Mm-hmm. Right. I or just want to say they... this. I like the movie. Um, I like um, Mora Pony score, of course. Right. Stuff. I, the, the the storytelling is just fine. Like I said, I drift off a little bit, but and, and I agree with everything you guys said about the uh, the reveal being cool and everything else, and the people watching not really, you know, that whole thing and everything that Dave said about the, the counterculture and everything. I. I get that it's not lost on me. I do I do like it. Um I, I have my issues with it, but here's a question. And I don't know if this is something that is a cultural thing or it's just something that they did just because it's a movie. But why would they let the neighbors see the dead body? That's like the uh, last that, thing you that's would like do. That's movie shit honestly, I okay, think. Okay, that's what I'm saying. There's a just... lot of stuff like that in in European, you know, whether it's uh, you, know, you see all the time like even Argento's films like, oh, yeah, this fucking no writer sense. is all of a sudden investigating the crime, you know. Yeah. yeah. Police. But this is police but procedural. But in real life, it's very life, odd for in a police procedural. Yeah. Because you know, you you don't want anyone to shoot about it, especially if they're they're a possible Oh yeah. yeah, and who's yeah. the first suspects in an apartment complex? The neighbors. You know what I mean? So it's like, I just I found that's that pure a little movie odd. shit and has nothing yeah. to do with like fucking. Oh, it's pure stuff. movie shit because I'm not. I'm not mad at it. I just wish it wasn't there. But we were talking about Halloween 2's pure movie shit when, like, they're like, no, no, Laurie Strode was taken to this hospital and some kid's carrying a boombox on Halloween. It's like, what the fuck? What this is fucking? <laughs> this is exposition, dumb guy. This is fucking. Right. It was a vehicle. No sense. Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah, a lot of that. Yeah, I know, it, especially it, in Giallo's. It's a it really this, the idea is like the regular man or like this person gets thrust upon this you know crazy. It, it's very detective. Like I mean, pulpy. That shit has been going on forever, and it, that's just what Giallo's are kind of. I mean, know? I mean, why were they singled out too? I mean, there's other neighbors in that building too. Why wasn't there just a huge ass party of fucking uh, right. people <laughs> checking out the dead body? I know, I know. It it, it just totally seems. It was wrong. odd. I knew. I figured yeah. somebody would bring that up for sure because it is seems. I'm odd, mad right? at it. Like their next door yeah, interview, and all of a sudden, like, hey, you guys want to go see like the body? Every damn Giallo is has that. Yeah. Like, I mean, we all know well, police really. procedural see, in real life that would never fucking. You, it just it would right. be so against never. the rules. It's oh, so against the rules. You couldn't see. That's what I'm saying. I think that our general stuff doesn't do that. And no, I've no. always said that. He does, does do that. Though. Look at look at Bird with the Crystal Plumage, right? Well, there's like, a, cheat. There's, there's a, dude, there's a definite cheat in that movie. Just saw a murder is thrust, and they're the police are literally showing him uh, footage or um, audio tapes of 
the killer or whatever, like that would never happen. You know? Well, uh, well, also Argento is very good at using visual cheats that trick your mind and they're in there for no reason except to trick your mind, which people could say are cheats like in Tenebrae. They show the plane fly away. So you're like, oh, Peter Neal's gone in your head. But then Peter Neal's not gone. But they just showed him f- the plane fly just so you would it's think like he's the gone. Angle That's shot, a visual like, cheat. That's a cheat. In plumage, right? But like, it works. Yeah. I never noticed that. Cheat. <laughs> and like in plumage, man, like people always forgive it. But like when it comes to the end and the reveal happens and then you, and then you go I back looked. and actually watch that shit. And it's like, it's not really how it was revealed. Like it's it's not how it was. So That's it is. not it, what was shown. Fuck. It's man. totally not. I keep and, looking every time and I can't see what everyone's talking about. One of these times it's going to register. I feel like Bird with the Crystal Plumage is a memory lapse. I feel like you're seeing what he can't use it as You actually don't see him see it you see his memory of what he saw the first time oh so the unreliable narrator yes yeah, so and you don't remember correctly well, anybody tells you the police lineup shit. your police lineup right. is not right it's never right you never pick out the right guy in a lineup yeah, yeah. they tell you that right. you don't remember correctly yeah but yeah, i i, I makes sense i can't I be to start off it's based on human error for sure because it is <laughs> yeah. it is more yeah. likely that people aren't going to remember properly and, and that's what he's playing off of, of which cheat. completely makes sense it, it's, it's a little it's, bit of a cheat it's though, actually, right it is it is a cheat and and i think but not I, much just a little bit yeah i i still think right. that it works though but it is funny if you like when you get the reveal in plumage and you go back to that scene in the film you're like that's not exactly how it played out at all <laughs> right he, he corrected it though in deep red yeah and that's there's what I, no better. There's no better when you walk by the killer and you see it in deep red and you're like, right. Did show me the killer? That's right. fucking brilliant. It is fucking brilliant, right? That's it deep is. red is so good for that. That scene is brilliant. Like you can't, yeah. you can't fuck with that. No. But um, yeah, I think lizard is, is incredibly interesting. And I think the narrative is the twists and turns. I, I honestly think they're done almost perfect. I, I really, when it comes to you know the criticisms Dave has of Giallos, I ha- I used to have a lot of the same ones, and I still do to a certain extent. But this particular one, I think, is I, I don't really see much issues with with the narrative and and being able to pick it apart at all. I think it's really you know cool what I like about this movie <laughs> is that Fulci when he did he did these Giallos, he did them he did them differently than people. Man, I like I always said it's I think it's so daring to tell. write a narrative like this because in most giallos like there's just it's red hearing it's and then a lot of times it's like the killer's like left turn it's like a total left turn you're like oh it's this person okay well that's fucking crazy oh, it's just yeah, like, I mean, that was person. and you're like yeah, okay but like, in this one it's very daring in the sense and like you know he's kind of giving it to you and then but he does the whole way to the reveal is so interesting and it could be all these things but he gives you these reasons and he breaks it right down and it gets right into it. So it seems more of a full mystery come full circle. And I, you know, I mean, I, I think it's just done differently. You don't see a lot of narratives in Giallo's done like this ever. Like tell me another one. And, and I love how like just in, in how it all wraps up with the exposition dump at the end where it's just like this t- tiny little detail of like uh, this information that the one person could not have had and mm-hmm. they slip up and you're like oh <laughs> you know what i mean right. and uh, i love like the idea of this there's like the repressed lesbian thing that's going on there and you have uh of the time you know that's very like people are ashamed you know what i mean and and, and don't want it the information out well, and I, that's a very interesting commentary for the it time shows, you know? it shows it showcases it showcases a lot of you know going back to the whole rich politician just rich people in general and stuff like that i mean it's revealed in the film that you know carol's husband is cheating on her and you know essentially it's kind of you know ver- it's kind of you know full cycle that one you know yeah. what i'm saying and but it's kind of interesting because it kind of showcases like you know rich in power it, it doesn't mean happiness at all i mean everyone's doing this shit they're all miserable and doing you know their own thing behind everyone's backs and shit like that it's just it's a it's like a fucking mess but it makes sense right it makes sense to me and uh you know i mean i like that i like that a lot I think I think the father in this film is an interesting character. It's an interesting red herring throughout the film. Um, there's a couple points in this film I really do, I really can't stand when you blatantly have I like I like when narratives point to people and they kind of go to this angle and they kind of show you this red herring and, and then it kind of plays off and it goes to something else and stuff. But I hate those blatant scenes where you have someone go into a police station and then just like fully confess to a murder and you know that this shit is just straight fucking exposition in the film. Like it doesn't even fucking matter. 
it doesn't matter. You know, this person's mm-hmm. not the killer and shit like that. There's a scene in this film that I've always disliked where that dude goes in there and is like, I kill, I killed him. I did this. I did that and shit like that. And I'm like, with the little tube of guts. <laughs> yeah. But it just doesn't make any fucking sense. Like why it, this is even in there because we've already have these, we have so many other angles in the film already. This just seems like you're adding to it and you're like, but you know, in your heart, this can't be real, right? This, this, this is not going this way. I feel like it's just a little bit of filler. I've always had a little problem with that in films. You can be smarter about it. I think there's so many elements in here that are so much more smarter with the characters and where it's leading you and stuff. And, and the reveals are brilliant too. Like, I mean, some people might think it's kind of a cheat where, you know, the father comes in and he overhears a conversation and stuff, but I think it's actually pretty well done because I'm not like, I'm not going to give it away, but yeah, all three of these films have a theme of like the police fucking suck. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, in like they're just wrong every time, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, they are <laughs> typical. Yeah, anti-authority, faulty. <laughs> right yeah, on, that's man. that's you said that. Yeah, it's very prevalent in the in just how wrong, how many, how literally sometimes they're wrong like four times in a movie. <laughs> also, uh, an anti-mob <laughs> mentality thing. too. Oh yeah, for sure in Duckling. See? No, Fulci, Fulci understood what he was doing, especially in. I think Duckling is his most realized film, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I think it's his. I think it's the most Fulci. But going back to like Fulci being daring and stuff, like you know, like this type of narrative, and then you got Duckling, which obviously it was narrative on a social commentary and like a political level. You know, people weren't really doing shit like that, and and he fucking did it like. He just shoved not it. Not in a horror movie. Not in a fucking horror you know, movie. No, he man. shoved it. He shoved it right in the viewers' face. He shoved it right in the politicians and the government's. Like they were everybody, doing stuff like that. They were the, uh, not happy with him. About suspicion and stuff. Dude, no, but, I, I feel like he at the, in the time he was making films, nobody fucking understood what he was doing. Yeah, and I think watching these three films now. Makes well, that the, even the bad people, people understood what he was doing because everyone else was turning blind eyes. That was the problem. So, like, when he was exposing this shit like he was, you know, for the hypocrisies of the Catholic Church were, you know, in, in Italy at the time. Well, I shouldn't say in Italy at the time. It's still going on. You know, I mean, it was, it was fucking powerful. You're pissing off people, but he knew what he was doing. Very daring. Yeah. So... Again. Are we good on Lizard, or did you want to? Yeah, I'm good on Lizard. I, I mean, uh, I, 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 these movies are a little bit hard to get into very specific things because I want people to. I, I feel like people haven't really seen this one as much. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, this, I think it's this worth is not the score being. Like, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the, yeah. This song's score always gets stuck in my fucking head. I play it all the time. Yeah, it's Morricone, man. Oh, actually, yeah, the yeah, scores in all these movies are really good. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're great. They're all really good, man. Yeah. It's... Um. Okay. Well, I guess we'll start with Dave. What's uh, on the rating tip? What do you What do you figure on this one, buddy? Ah, uh, seven. Respectable. Yeah, seven. JP, I dig it. Uh, eight point five. Love it. Dave, mm, I'm torn between eight and eight to five. I'm going to give it an eight. I'm also. I think it's special though. I think it's very unique though for a Gialli, so it should be a little higher because there's not quite anything like it. I mean, maybe that's what really it, sold it for me, Dave. Somebody could say all colors of the dark is, but I still don't think that one is either. I don't think it's as clever, so I'll, I'll still stick with an eight. I'll still stick with an eight. I'm also in an eight and a half, and that's my reasoning too. I like. I just I couldn't stress enough how different and daring and and it, it, this one just really sticks out for me man i think it's really interesting um you know if you're not too sure on giallis you know maybe give this one a shot it might change your mind a little bit um just done differently you know it's it's not like your typical stuff so um yeah so a lizard in woman's skin from 1971 <laughs> All right, so getting into the second featured review here from 1972, which we have done a top 10 show for, and I guess that's not a spoiler, but I think this was my number one film of 72, wasn't what, it? <laughs> were you on this, Dave? Both no. Dave's? I was wasn't. No, I started this one and then didn't finish it. Oh, yeah, I yeah. remember that. I remember I watched some movies for it, but ultimately didn't make it. I can't remember yep. what happened. There might have been a spat or something back in those days. When <laughs> I was trouble. This, yeah. uh, I know it made Moods' top ten. It made mine as well. I'm pretty sure it was my number one film, wasn't it? Was it? 
Bye. Yeah, because Carrie was mine. <laughs> no, wait, this is 72. 72, yeah. 76. What the hell was 72? I don't know, man. You could probably check the website if you had this top 10. Like, you're missing like five I or six. I think it's on there, dude. Yeah, I think we can check. Is. I'll check. Um, but yeah, so the year after he came out with Don't Torture a Duckling. Um, all right, so we'll just get into the synopsis here. Uh, when a southern Italian town is rocked by a string of child murders, the police and two urban outcasts search for the culprit <laughs> amid scapegoping. Scapegoping. What is scapegoping? <laughs> scapegoating within the superstitious community. I like how it says two urban outcasts search for the culprit. So they're they're referring to Thomas Milan's character as being a outcast. Wait, repeat it. That's funny. It, it just in the in the synopsis it says two urban outcasts search for the culprit, which I'm. Well, assuming, they are urban outcasts. Well, she's, I know she's from the rich city, and he's a reporter. And yeah, everybody I, else is. I know, but poor. but a reporter is considered like an outcast. Well, everybody that doesn't belong to this town right. is an outcast. Right. And also, it's so a, is the witch, and so is the perverted uh, poor guy, and she is, and so is the reporter. No, and I just, they're all considered suspects. And I won't get into any spoilers, but the yeah. person who ends up being a killer is the most respected person in the community. So th- this movie's, I mean, we uh, talked about it before, but yeah. So this one right here takes place in like a it little small. It was number one. It's, yeah, a uh, small community, you know, r- basically run by, you know, the Catholic Church and stuff like that. Everyone's very superstitious, very religious in the town and stuff like the that. The superstition, so. I think, is a very big point in this, like, uh, equal as, like, the religious aspects. The superstition, I mean, they kind of go hand in hand, but I, I feel like the superstition aspects. Same are, with the brainwashing, real- the superstition, the brainwashing, it all kind of lumps itself into the same kind of category everyone kind of has also this. mob mentality that's what i'm and saying they blame the outsiders for everything and it results in the mob mentality that's what i'm saying so yep. the brainwashing the religion all that type of stuff it just it kind of balls itself up into that mob mentality everyone just agrees you know it is what it is you know that's what happens to marcy in this film and um this is a really powerful film man it's really really powerful like I've mentioned before that, you know, it's got balls for the time. People weren't really trying to expose the Catholic church for what they were doing at the time. And I know faulty took a lot of heat from a lot of people on this one. And I think there was even points where, I mean, I don't know if it's true that faulty was considering like, you know, not even really putting this thing out because of the backlash and stuff. I believe that would probably go against his, his mentality because why would you even make this film in the first place? But but uh, yeah, like I mean, there was a lot of people turning a blind eye to what the rumors were within the Catholic Church, the hypocrisies of religion, and what how it was controlling communities and people in general. And you know, there was all this thing about you know the pedophilia within the Catholic Church, and and just everybody just going along with their day and turning a blind eye. That's essentially what this movie this, is really yeah. about. This guy is not a pedophile, though. Well, yeah, they actually they actually do he's not say, a pedophile. There's no sexual motive. They make sure they say that out loud. Yeah, they say that a few times actually in this film. Yeah, um, I mean, there, um, there there was there is the one boy that they said was sexually molested. So no, I, they say was no, he was not. They say was not. I bet my life on it. No, they say For the sure. other boy wasn't. They said one was though. No, they no. say both was not. Oh. They say they were not. Mm. And anyway. the whole reasoning of, of the killer's motives are not sexually driven. Right. At all. Right. No, but I mean, let's just talk about the fucking, the, the basic the thing, like not buried to lead the scene in the movie with the, uh, the Riz Ortolani score with the, um, what's the word? Diegetic music is, is basically something that would inspire people like Quentin Tarantino. That's probably one of the best scenes. It's Fulci's finest moment. Oh, and uh, I cry. Is- I fucking cry this time i cry Literally every time amazing. Scene. it yeah. hurts it just <laughs> sums up mob mentality it sums up how faulty saw superstition it sums up how he sees human beings and human nature and it's just fucking beautiful it's genius. even at the very it's end rough. when the car just like sort of drives by they don't want to ruin their vacation jp they don't want to worry about it they don't care and it's so Again, sad but that, that, so that's sad. what i'm talking about that's a perfect scene right there people just turn in a blind eye he showcases it right on screen, scene right? Like, That's the best fault you, you ever see, made. You see, you see shit going happened. on in reality, and you literally drive by, and that's what people are doing every single day with what they know is going on in the church. And it's very fucking powerful. It's a double meaning. You're right. It's beautiful. The music's beautiful. Actually, the parts of the score actually ended up being in Cannibal Holocaust too, right? 
Isn't that it? I bet. And, and you, I, you know what? Cisneroni is my favorite composer. Yeah, I think he that t- he may not be considered the best, but he he's took my a, favorite. He took a few parts from this score that he did, and he actually re did them and rehashed them and kind of put them into Cannibal Holocaust, which is pretty cool. So it predates Ruggiero Diodato's MO of using the awful imagery with the beautiful music. It was yeah. used here first in Don't Torture a Duckling, and it was used probably just as good, if not better. You know what I mean? In that scene, that scene is just like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking to this is the one I like the most. This is the one I have the most connection to. Yeah, I just think that scene is so brilliant. I think this movie is brilliant. I think it just it says everything that you have to say about the situation in a perfect way. It also has an amazing cast. It's got Mark Porrell. It's got Thomas Milan. It's got Barbara Shea. It's got everybody in this fucking thing. Um, and Felinda Vulcan. This, this is, is such a finest weird, moment. It's a weird role for Thomas Milan. He's so his character. He's just so grounded. You know, in a lot of Thomas Milan roles, like he's always like the funny, outrageous, ridiculous. He's he he's crazy. just he's he's always a crazy fucking guy in like every movie. And like this one, he feels so he's grounded. Got a prince back in a <laughs> yeah, it's it's a weird role for him, man. And I love they cast Florinda Balkan in this in this kind of outcast role as like this well everyone the superstitious the witch. witch, you know, like she's the one that had this kid with a fucking male witch and blah blah blah, and then she's all crazy. like I love how they, they play off this angle because they showcase that superstition and people's mentality towards these type of people so well in this film. And I love you know, even like all the point of the POV shots of her with, um, you know, like the little voodoo dolls and stuff like that. I like that whole angle where yeah. it kind of leads you off to think that maybe she is responsible for doing this. And, you know, it, you it's know, where she thinks she is. Yeah, like, she truly life, does. Right? Like, which is yeah. like, that's what makes the whole thing even more tragic yeah. is like this person just they didn't, you know, that they. The town blames her too. The town blames her too. Well, right, the right. town was going to blame anybody that was, you know, brought in by the police at this point, especially her, because you know that's the whole point of it, right? But uh, yeah, no, I, I like that whole Which angle I- where she's doing the, you know, she thinks that she's responsible, but she knows she physically didn't kill them. Yeah, right. So she she thinks she did. I know it's it's really it's really interesting. Right, but. which almost makes it seem like, you know, that this person clearly has issues, right? Like like. And you feel bad for them because, mm. you know, who knows how they were raised and like what they well, went they through and stuff. And- they showcase why she's doing this, why she puts the death wish on these children, because obviously yeah. of, of right. what happened with the grave and stuff like that. Right. So at least they showcase that. And then you get to see what's going on there and stuff like that. So I mean, she's the only sympathetic character in the movie. Yeah. Besides the kids. Well, no the, the male witch makes me laugh when he gets into the bathroom. He's like, I got to take a shit. That's, I was going to bring that up too. That's you, now, excuse me. I got to take a crap. That's a brilliant. <laughs> I, yeah, you're you kind of right on that. I can't, I was trying to think of other characters, but oh, they're all, they're all superstitious morons. And, and when she leaves that police station and the old, that whole scene from when she leaves the police station all the way until her death is just finest fucking moment. He had the yeah. spitting, the, the women are spitting and they won't look at her. It's just like, oh my god, it's rough. And then the fathers of the victim, the kids are waiting, and like the one guy has that that look on his face, like he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it, but he, he's gonna do it. And it's just, it's a, it's a fuck up scene. It predates the scene in the Beyond, ungodly warlock, very similar. Right. And mm-hmm. you see the superstition in, in the Beyond. You see that same superstition in City of the Living Dead. Right. It's just, it's, it's, it's riddled his career, and it's just, and this is all this, it's, it's that. It's, yeah, it's what, such a, it's 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 the one it's one of the arguments you could say that Fulci is an art tour. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's themes, and a lot of directors don't have them. Right? Would he, you say this Fulci, is Fulci's best? You know, I think this is what, not my favorite, but his best. This is one of the reasons why I have such a connection with Fulci because, like, I wouldn't say he's full blown nihilist, and I'm not I'm not a nihilist either. I, I am somewhat. I mean, some people call me pessimistic, but I am. I'm more of a realist. Like you just kind of see, I say things based on how they really are, you know, kind of thing. And I feel like Fauci is kind of like that too. And I think that's kind of the reason why I connect with him too, because I, I see people like this too. Like I see the realism in people. People are fucking nasty human beings, man. They're easily brainwashed. They're very easily controlled. And he, he showcases so well. I think this is one of the most vicious beatings I've ever seen in a fucking movie. Like, you know, going back to the score, I mean, it's this fucking, you know, this yeah, happy if, if type you watch music, this, and it's so melodic. It gives me the same feeling it's as so Platoon does, melodic. where dude, you know, William Defoe's character, yeah, it like gives me the same exact feeling, where you just want to, like, you, know you know what I mean? There's nothing Sadness. worse than drawing out a nasty beating. Like, you could beat someone down in, you know, scenes over in two minutes, whatever, you, you get it. Like, everyone's on her at once with chains and sticks and shit, but they're all taking turns. They're letting her move a little bit, and they fucking whip her, and it goes on for, like, ever. 
Yeah. yeah. So if somebody like but watching this is enjoying it, you should you should be hurt. Like when you watch yeah. this, you should hurt. Yeah. If you don't like the hurt, but then that, you won't like. You know what I mean? Like, I get, us, like, there's a weird thing where I feel like people that are like, "That's great gore." It's like, get help, bro. It's not like, even this, about that. It's about <laughs> capturing this is what's happening. Scene. It's about what the why these people are doing this shit, man. You know, it's not about her being beat and shit. It's about why they're doing this and, and you know, why they're in that position and shit. And it's like, it's so beyond powerful. And I, I don't know if everyone really gets that, but. Well, it's also, well, it's like the best constructed scene. It's just brilliant. Oh, the dude. gate closes on her hand. And then when they leave, mm-hmm. she hears My, the gate close. It's just every little detail about it is fucking nuanced it, it and just, brilliant. Yep, but all the way up to the very end of it. Shows that yeah. fucking, that brute mentality, that mob mentality of people. They, they beat her to an inch of her death just to let her suffer more. Yeah. Right. And there's she, good she point had, of views too. There's yeah. good point of views too, and the camera does point of view stuff in here too, which is pretty pretty crazy. Yeah. But I, th- I, my favorite part of the whole scene is when she gets up to the road, and then you see that fa- family just accentuate the entire theme of the movie. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. just so powerful. Yeah. It's so fucking powerful mm-hmm. because, as a normal human being, that's not brainwashed by, you know, fucking community superstition and hypocrisies and religion and shit like that. Like, like us. I would have fucking stopped my car and helped her, man, because I'm a fucking real person, man. It's just, it angers me. And I, I, I get mad when I talk about hypocrisies and religion because it drives me fucking nuts. It's so <laughs> crazy how people are literally crazy about this shit, man. And like, you say it, people, but I would say groups. Groups of people. We know it's all, it's mob mentality. It's, it's a group. Yeah. Individuals can be smart and compassionate and loving, but when you get them in a mob right. mentality in a group, well, they're, that's, they're that's my thing. And, and people are always like, oh, you're so anti. I'm like, I'm not anti. I'm not anti that at all. I'm, I'm, I'm against the people that conform to each other and then create these groups that do this type of shit. Like organized religion yeah. is fine if you still are an individual about it. Once you conform and you become these groups and, and, and conform to this mob mentality and shit, we have a fucking problem right now. This it is what happens. Very, it can get very extreme. It's very extreme. It's very, it, it convolutes the entire world. And this is what the, the separation between people, it really fucking happens. And it's like, but religion really does change people's minds, man. It really brainwashes people into the point where... You know, like this is how it is, and there's nothing ever going to change the mentality in them, which is scary well, as shit. Because if you can't change someone with simple, like humanistic, re- uh, like reasoning, we have a fucking problem, man. Yeah, you're yeah. driving by that woman that is dying on the side of the road. That's the fucking problem. The thing is, the the town actually a lot of them blamed her for the murders of the kids too. So it's, it's that mom mentality. Right. The one thing I like about this though, and I always give props to a lot of directors that like Fulci that I feel is genuine like Fulci was part of the church he understood the church when we, when you watch an American movie like this it seems so fake and forced no offense um, I know he's R.I.P'd but Collar with Ryan Nicholson that was the most forced bullshit ever he was raped by a priest and you're coming from this as an outsider and you're attacking Fulci is an insider attacking and it feels right, real that's the best works. people right like the people yes, you don't want to have the knowledge of the experience yes. they're the ones that are going to say the most prominent and interesting things about it poignant yeah that, that's a very good point dave then i feel that's what fulci was good at it like the superstition because he was never um he what was that did troy Haworth do that joke where he he quoted fulci or something um he said he always wishes he was like oh man he always wishes he was like a famous director who said thank god i'm an atheist and he said fulci kind of wishes he was but he could never be an atheist you know, I think this is kind of like, I, I think this is kind of one of those things, you know, like Fulci was brought up as a, as a Catholic. He claimed that he was a Catholic and stuff, but he was also, again, realistic about it. He knew all the shit that was going on and he saw what it was doing to people and stuff. And, you know, I mean, he was an individual, you know, he's being well, he to call out bullshit. Exactly. And still he, didn't, he didn't conform. And a lot of people that did grow up, you know, say if you grew up in a religious family, chances are you still pro- practice as, as an adult because that's how you grew up. That's why there's a lot of, you know, systematic racism in the world too. Like if you grew up with parents that were, you know, being racist and shit like that, chances are you probably are like that too. It's fucked up. It's really fucked up. Yeah, you got a little bit of that trash in you That's systematic parents. bullshit. Yeah. But that's why I love people like Fulci and like us who have individual brains and stuff. Like I live in a, like my, my, my wife's family is super religious and they're very organized religion and blah, blah, blah. And like, I'm super against it. 
but I'm, I'm outspoken and they, they're fine with it. You know, like I'm not rude about it and shit. I'm just, you know, I don't care that people practice that shit, but the systematic I, shit is, it is scary to me, but I, that's what I love about Fulci. And that's my connection to him is shit like this. And this is why I love this fucking movie, man, because I he came like from that f- world. He came from that world of being raised as a Catholic and even still kind of practicing. Like I said, he was an understand. insider that made a comment about it. Exactly. So it's, I feel it's like good. that all four of us sort of probably grew up in a way where we kind of marched the beat of our own drum instead of like following our family's traditions and stuff like that. At least yeah. I, I know that I was kind of like that. Oh, I never. I, for sure. Ever, <laughs> ever, ever conform. I'm so not even. I, well, yeah, it's just I was so different so different i kind of just did my own thing like i i yeah. like being unique like i like being like my own sort of so, own world dave i know you didn't say anything on the movie do you have anything to say sorry <laughs> oh uh, okay i have questions uh the okay. first question the the um you know uh, the accused witch uh, with the with the, the buried uh baby now uh-huh. here, okay my later serious. on there's there's skeletons uh, or a skeleton in the cave so what maybe I missed something. So what did she do? Did she because it kept getting disturbed go out there and dig it up herself and then bring the skeleton back to the cave? Cuz a place outside where the kids are playing or way back in the cave. It can't be both, right? It was initially uh, where the kids were playing. Right. So and then where she where does she, dig it up, right? Do, do they? And she so does it the all. Okay, I didn't know that. That's what I'm saying. I might have blinked and missed it or something. That's fine. I remember all. I remember all the voodoo doll scenes, each and every one, and putting yeah. the, the pins in the and everything actually, else, and having them out there. And do the kids? I never really thought about it, but do they actually dig it up on purpose? Do they know about? It, or are they just fucking with her? Well, they yeah. they're fucking around, and she yells it, and then they go back there and fuck with it, and they find it, I think, and dig it up. Yeah. Right. So there was there is right. actually a strictly. I remember I always kind of pictured it as oh they were fucking around and they they just accidentally kind of found this thing and then she saw that. And then they come back again. They come back the next day after she runs them off and they dig it up. Yeah. So yeah, but I don't think they show that part until later in the movie. So originally, so but like, originally like, they were just they found it by chance, right? Yeah, they, they found the spot, around. and they, they were fucking around with the spot. And they because had no she idea. was like, "Get the fuck away from there!" They're like, "Oh, why is yeah?" You know? Yeah, they knew something was up. Yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly. Oh, okay, I couldn't remember <laughs> okay, if so I couldn't remember it. if they made a point of going there, like, "Oh, this is where they, she potentially buried her fucking her evil child or whatever." But no, it's I don't think it's ever that in the narrative. Was well, that body in the, the the cave was a baby, right? And the, was it the right, baby? It was a tiny. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's the baby she brought back. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, that okay, was apparently I, the I one that she had the with scene the of her witch. Digging it up. Yeah, that was. Well, her. They show the dig up. They show the whole scene in a flashback when she's in a police station. Yeah, maybe mm-hmm. that's why I didn't. It didn't connect, and I was just. See, I thought she was just doing some shit. You know what I mean? Maybe not necessarily yeah. Yeah, but doing voodoo shit. So maybe that. She did that a went couple. By me. They do that at the end when they reveal the killer. They show a bunch of his like actions when they show yeah. all that. Yep. Okay. What now? Th- oh. Okay. Sorry, Dave. Hold up. Wait, Dave got another question. I yeah. want to hear. Yeah. Without trying to spoil anything, when the reveal is made for who the killer is, is there a reason given? Because I didn't. Yeah. Get yeah. It. Yeah. Hundred percent. Wants to preserve their innocence. Yep. By you know if if he feels that he is able to. Um, make sure that they can't go to hell by, you know, acting. <laughs> yeah. So why does he think they are going to hell? Because he's it's watching the them do it's smoking the cigarettes and, and looking at women have sex and stuff like that. And he's, he's watching them and he's watching them, you know, lose their innocence. Well, his, I'm sorry, it's going to have to spoil this. His yeah, sister is actually true. mentally handicapped. And there's a brilliant line in the movie where it says, it's so weird that she's mentally handicapped and the rest of the family is perfectly fine. And then you find out not one of them's fucking fine. All three of them. <laughs> actually, if you watch yeah, the it's, English it's beyond dub, brilliant. Say, it's actually beyond oh, brilliant. Oh, she's not a moron. She's just retarded. Yeah, I remember that. But yeah. it's, you know, uh-huh. it's, seven, it's 70s lingo. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, but, but being a moron is your own fault. Being mentally handicapped is not right, your fault. Right, exactly. This is actually retarded used in the proper I, medical context. Well, back then it was a medical term. It was right. basically... Yeah. They used to say they were mentally way. retarded. See, that's how brilliant Fulci really is, is, though, with that line. He, he's, so, he's so brilliant with yeah. that line. Like, oh, it's Challenge. crazy how she's retarded and the rest of the family is fine. Like, he's literally... They're not fine. He's well, that but that's that that's the ironic thing about it, and like, yeah, but he's just, but, it's, that's br- it up but it's brilliant because he's literally telling you who it is right there. But you just for most people, you're just like, Phew, okay, 
Yeah, but I actually yeah, really that I, second watch because the mom's fucked up too. The mom's not right either. No, absolutely not. The mom's okay. the reason that the witch gets killed. She actually sells her out to put the blame on the witch so her son can get away with the murders because she fucking knew he was the murderer the whole time. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I know. The mom is a also, fucking piece of shit. The mom's a total piece of shit. But like, <laughs> but, okay, so, kids, so, so my question, so I wanna, I'm actually going to ask Dave Z this. So when the the two outcasts, <laughs> we'll just call them the outcasts, Tom, Thomas Milan and, and Passeria, uh, the naked chick, um, when they basically figure out like um, – there's a scene in the film where they kind of figure out who's probably responsible for this um, through, you know, basically the Donald Duck head and shit like that. I think this is, I think this reveal is this, the way it leads up to this is fucking pretty good, man. Pretty brilliant. Like, what do you think of how they reveal that? I bet fucking Disney's pissed. I know, right? <laughs> totally. Also used Donald totally. Duck twice, by the way. Two Donald I know, Ducks. New York Ducks. Ripper. New York well, Ripper. Right? I think it's kind of right. cool that the title of the movie, Don't Torture Duckling, comes from just that one little thing. But I think it's really oh, fucking cool how they incorporate the mentally challenged girl and squeeze you know, the head of the doll. It's so brilliant. I think that whole sequence of events in the in the third act is just so cool. It always blows yeah, my mind it, how the they constructed it feels that. Inconsequential a little bit too. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Like you don't really think about it too hard. No, and it's it's kind of nice. It doesn't it doesn't feel forced. It feels really cool. And then it's like, well, I mean, he's got to do something about this now because like she's seen. Yeah, it's it's very it's very interesting. It's sad at the same time, but it also leads to one of the greatest scenes in cinema history. <laughs> Mood's favorite dummy death, right? You guys, this is my number one of all fucking time, man. Sparking dummy. Death. Oh my god, I have seen millions of dummy deaths in my life and i laugh every single time yes. by myself in my house i will be howling all by myself i don't I care and i fucking I laughed out loud so hard house dude i laughed so, so like, hard I'm again i never understood why the face sparks but i don't care because it's so fucking funny to me <laughs> i don't even find it funny i just like the scene i think it's really touching because it I does love this back with everything and it shows him killing and shows who he Wait, is which one do you think was stuff. done better and not in terms this of one, the context of the story this one just this like one. visually this one's better no the scene this is one. powerful but it, you gotta admit though like the way it goes down is it's pretty it's damn weird cool. it's a weird scene it let's is be weird, honest it is a weird scene actually it's but. like all slow-mo because so you can see like <laughs> the, the but i like the touches i personally think it's cool because it's different but well Fulci- what about the mannequin did you guys notice the mannequin fucking when they showed the one dead girl earlier in the film and it was clearly a fucking mannequin in like a glass case Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it was ridiculous. See, that's the shit that I I, I miss. Dummy in the glass. Oh, I never miss. Are you talking about the boy in the in the pool of water? Yeah, yeah it's oh, water. God. It wasn't a girl. I apologize. You, you know, what's yeah, the thing? Like, there's girls murdered in this. You know, um, I think that was a boy. Okay. I think that was one of the boys. Well, it doesn't well, matter. Yeah, yeah that's, that's another, another thing that's just really dope about this movie is like it's about a fucking child killer, that, yeah. and you and all these, you know, it's a it's a serial killer of children. Yeah. Uh, and even the, 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 they dig up the little hand or foot or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it's just disturbing. Yeah. And a lot of stuff in this film is disturbing with, with the, the children. Um, and also I got to say this too. I absolutely love the setting of this film. Um, this like sort of open area of village. The rare uh, rural Diallo. There's not many of them. Right, it, and it right. fits perfect with the characters and type of people that live here. Most of his movies don't take place in Italy either. It's a rarity. It's very personal for him. Yes. Yeah. And well, I, I mean, he could only. I, I think the location Italy. really helps, like this film. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, and you're right, though, man, because most yellows generally take place in the bigger cities. That's what they do. Yeah, or a different city. They want to be or, exotic. And well, that's rare in the moving Italy, but this movie can be made anywhere else but Italy because of what it's saying. No, exactly. What it's, it's about. It's, it's all about the Italian. And who's making it too? Yep. Yeah. It kind of made me want to rewatch that one movie that you liked, Dave. That was a Spanish film from uh, the Ensign's Woods. Yeah. Wolf in the Woods. Yeah, yeah. I told you that movie's got a great superstitious feel too. Like, it I just, has similar it, themes uh, to this. Yeah, it does. I mean, like it really does. I was. I like that. that while you know watching that. This. I think that movie's a masterpiece. I think you guys slept on it. I don't think you guys got like me. <laughs> Which, one? Watch it again, man. Which one are we talking about? I might be wrong. Maybe it sucks. I bet if that can, hey, if that movie gets a wide release on Blu-ray, people will be like, oh, this movie's fucking amazing. Watch, guarantee. Well, Which yeah, because it's the first time coming to blue and it's fucking on. 
world and it hasn't been out. Of course, by default, it's amazing. Yeah, but I liked it right out. off the bat. I'm not talking about oh, I know you did, I, I, and I, I agree. You don't good. want to be that guy who's like, I liked it first. I just want other people what? to discover it. Which I just one? wanted to get some credit. Which movie the are we talking about here? Oh, The Wolf in the Seventy. Oh. Right. I just want people yeah, to see it. Like, I want people to see it. You know what I mean? Word. Yeah, no, they'll see it. It's coming out. They'll come out. Yeah. So here's what I have to say. I thought it was kind of funny at the beginning. Not funny, kind of cool that there's a lizard in the beginning. So I don't know how, how far away this was from fucking the lizard movie, but it's it was one year of those later. things. It's a year later. <laughs> one year later. One year. Okay. <laughs> how the lizard dies, how he hits it so, with a rock to and then the kid dies by getting hit in the back of the head first to get stunned and then strangled, just like the lizard. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. See, I did. I kind of. Oh, shit, dude. It was metaphorical, that, man. It was metaphorical. That, that it was metaphorical. And that's the only scene I've ever seen in a Fulci movie that has animal cruelty. He's not big on animal cruelty. Well, I don't even know if it connected. It seems like it cut really quick, and I was like, good, I don't want to see a gutted fucking lizard. So it looks like as soon as it made some type of impact or it was next to the lizard, it looked like it cut away. So I was like, okay. Yeah, because movies don't have any animal cruelty. You know, he never did a movie. He didn't kill any. Like, even Dario kills lizards and shit in a lot of his movies. Isn't that so ironic that he had to go to court to prove the, the, the dog scenes, though? And he doesn't even really have any of that shit in his movie. Movies. That's yeah, crazy, and uh, the, we referenced it earlier, but I believe he had to go to court to prove that the child was not in the same room as the naked woman. <laughs> so this movie has one of probably probably wow. one of the most uncomfortable scenes. Yeah, and that's actually a scene we didn't really talk about, but basically so this this outcast was. chick, Oof. she's like living upstairs in this place or whatever, and this kid brings mm-hmm. her some food. <clears throat> Anyway, she's up there, I guess, inside tanning. Pfft, I don't know. She's under some type of blue lights or I, dude, like, hot sitting, or it's, sit around naked. It's what? weird. Why does she live there? Office. That was my question. Well, she Why had a drug problem there? and she had to move away back from the big city back to her hometown because she was not allowed to be there anymore. Her dad, so whose house was she in? Her dad. basically having being taken care of by the rich, the, the maid and stuff. Yeah, her dad. Right, owned, but her why dad was she in that house where the kid lived? Her dad owns What's it because they were like helpers or some shit. Yeah, her dad. Oh, actually they were owns, helpers. Yeah, yeah. Her dad owned See, a lot I of. Fucking miss everything. Her dad owns a lot of that shit, so that's why she was there and stuff. So yeah. she was just able to be there. I knew that she came from, really from money in that. The okay, woman, I just didn't know why he, why, why the kid. I didn't realize that they were that they were helpers at the house. I just thought that they lived there and that fucking this kid stumbled upon her. I'm like, why is she even here? But yeah, now this I'm, is the examples of like the like, fill in the blanks things I was talking about that's because what I'm saying. you yeah, just I, have to see like, oh, the the maid is like preparing orange juice for the woman. You know what I mean? It was orange AJP. Orange well, I mean the family. I mean they do live. They do. Live, yeah, they're the helpers. They're the families. They they do reside they're probably there. Though. Live in. They're yeah. living help. It exactly. might be their house and she's finding the room. Too. Okay, yeah. now but, that explains it. But I don't think do they do they she let does you know say, this in the movie? She does say, yeah, they say it. She okay. does say that her father owns a lot of the properties and stuff. So I'm assuming she's living in one of the owned properties. And the maid is complaining. She's like, "Why?" Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just again, I was just I didn't know who was the maid, who wasn't, who worked. I, I just it's hard to I don't know. I, it, sometimes it just goes past me, but it's cool. I was a little confused for like the first little bits because the peeping Tom guy comes in, and then another character comes out shortly after, and he looks too much like the peeping Tom guy. Right. So I thought that was him, and I was getting my fucking self confused. Is this the first so, time watch, Dave? This is the second time watch, but the first time I watched it was um, let me think about it. It was a it was a February because it was after. It was yeah. I did. I did. Uh, what do you call it? Non horror January, and then after that, I was just doing catching up on movies that I, I feel I should have seen that I owned because I've owned Duckling, but I never watched it. So I want to say it was either two or three years ago. I watched it in February, mm-hmm. and all I remembered about the movie coming in to watch it this time was the way it ended. That was the only thing that resonated with me and stuck with me was the fucking the dummy death and the guy going against because it was a great deal. Yeah, so you, I remember that and literally nothing else about the movie because my memory is shit. So, but that stuff was cool. The uh, yeah, naked girl. So I wrote that in my my notes <laughs> the witch. Here's what was fucking funny. That piano key that they kept hitting and they kept showing the duck's head and fucking zooming in on it. Boom. Yeah, right. Boom. It was almost like comical. It was the, the weirdest fucking no, thing. No, I know you're saying that. Yeah. I know you're but saying again, that. Right? Yeah. It's the flavor, though. It's part of the charm of fucking yeah. Italian movies. So yeah. I excuse it. But at the same time, it's, it still makes me chuckle, you know? I still think it's like one of the most... It is a very awkward scene. And, you know, <laughs> like... 
I mean, she's literally just laying up there buck naked, but she's really enticing the kid. And it's so awkward she's flirting man. with him, dude. It's totally, like, totally flirting and, and just enticing him and getting him. Oh, man, it's so crazy, man. She, she literally asks him, does do you want to come to bed with me? Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy because like they, they even say his age, like he's 12 and she's quite clearly yeah. a lot fucking older. <laughs> right. And so like in her to 20s. be fair, I know people in real life who lost their virginity when they were 12. Yeah. Um. Probably not to, but anyways, like that that scene like, in, in question, oh, Fulci again got gotten shit with with the uh, with the popo because um, they thought they had a little bit of pedophilia pedophilia thing going on there where he had to prove that the that there was a there was a stand in for the boy. There's a scene where the boy's walking towards yeah, her. Yeah, I think and they just use like a little person. They right? use the dwarf. They they called they, they but you can clearly see in the editing that it's a different body type. The kid the dwarf is a lot bigger, the head's bigger. I think you can even see facial hair for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite clear that it was a stand in and every scene in that film where the boy's apparently looking at the naked girl, they're not in the same shot. So they're quite clearly not on the same set, right? So you know, it's pretty obvious to us, but anyways, it's still an awkward scene no matter how you look at it. It's she's enticing a twelve year old boy and it just kinda ends. That's it. It's weird. Yep. Um anything else? Uh not without giving everything I man, this movie's awesome. I think I'm up, right? Ratings? Yep, you're up. Uh yeah, dude. I mean I really liked this movie when I first seen it. It was my number five of that year. It would definitely probably be higher now. Um, I think after this watch, it clicked even more. And I just, I loved it. And I honestly think this might be Fauci's best film. I told Um, you that. Yeah. And I agree with you. Like uh, I said, it is Fauci's best movie. Yes. Not my favorite, but it's his best. That's exactly my sentiments. The beyond. Okay, my favorite is City of the Living Dead, and then maybe Zombie, and then this. But I do think that in terms of pure, uh, um, just put together everything from the narrative to the the cameras to the music to the story, everything. I, th- I think this probably is his best film. And, in, in my personal um, favorite top get- movies, I have fucking like the Beyond, City of the Living Dead, and Zombie are all in like my top like seven films. It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, so the Beyond's also yeah. my favorite, Dave. Um, but don't torture a duckling, man. I, I I feel like I have to give it a nine and a half for me. Dave might seem a little high, but Dave's here, me Parka. Ten out of ten. It's one of my all-time favorites. What can I say? Um, it's my third favorite, Fulci. Maybe my second. Um, and Beyond Zombie and Don't Torture, all tens. There might be some more tens in there too, to be honest. But yeah, I love this movie. I think it's brilliant. I think it might be the best Jolly. This this and Tenebrae next to each other, I think, are my two favorites. I just, yeah. I just what, there's not anything yeah, better. Not in black lace. Yeah. What it says, how it's made, it's just fucking. It's everything. And there's there's very rarely a scene that can make me cry. I cried. I cried. Right, yeah, I couldn't help it. I just bawled. It's fucking brutal, man. It's so brutal. It, it's it's so made me cry. Um, it's like Cannibal Holocaust. It just makes me cry. I can't help it. It just gets to me. <laughs> it's, it's like I just can't it's, help it. I it's, cry. It's because of that soundtrack, dude. It's all about music. M- music. Yeah, it, it just invokes like so much emotion to people. That's why I, I love music so much. Like. I literally associate everything in my life through music. And like, I can think of things that happened like 25 years ago and I get goosebumps from it. I can tell you what was playing, you know, and that's these moments when you hear those scores and shit and it just brings it out of you, man. It's so effective without that score. Yeah. The scene's totally different, right? You could you imagine all of a sudden death metal kicks in and they start kicking the shit out of her with chains and shit. You're like, what the fuck? And then probably turn it off. It would fucking ruin it. Um, so 10 out of 10 perfect 10 out of 10 for myself i think it's brilliant um what can i say that we haven't said already without giving the did whole it already make the hall thing? no oh, I, I do don't not think, so. think it was in the hall so i think it makes it now well that's but, 29 um, and a half right there that's fucking high yeah well dude wow. honestly like I, I i think this movie is is brilliant it's so powerful I really it's and i love these type of sh- i love these showcase the hypocrisies Fauci is really hitting for me this this go around. Yep. All right, Mr. Dave? Z. 
Wow, man. Um, <laughs> hope, hope, hopefully the third time will be the charm for me, and that is the case sometimes. But you guys answered a couple questions, so it did it did help me. So um, <laughs> it's so funny I'm coming in so low by comparison, but it's it's a seven and a half for me. That's Ooh. fair. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I dig it. You know, I just man, I wish I had the love that that you guys have. But again, maybe the third time. We, I think we've seen it a couple more times than you. That that makes a difference on this kind of movie. I think. Yeah, I just have to get past certain. I can't drift. I have to fucking one hundred percent. This pay attention. I think and sometimes it's hard when it moves. Do you still and, smoke, Dave? Yeah. Maybe try that. Yeah, I had to do that for the psychic because I was like twenty minutes into it. And I didn't understand what the fuck was going on. <laughs> so then I smoked. Really? And I'm not saying I knew more what was going on, but I enjoyed it more after I smoked. But yeah, the psychic thing come together the first time. Oh, we'll talk about when we get there. The first time I saw it, yeah. then like as it, as I as it got to the end of the movie, I was like, oh shit. Oh, oh I guess shit. Well, there's a reason. I, for I guess me. the opening scene would Man, actually kind of make a psychic. I got that one fucking perfect. I, I can see how the beginning of the movie would confuse the... people. It would actually confuse people for sure. Because it jumps from yeah. Anyways, we'll get into that. Seven and a half. Like I always say, ratings are for dummies. <laughs> all right yeah, so but that's my, but yeah whatever it is what it, it's all personal I, it, I don't get offended if i mean if, even if dave gave it a four i'd be like whatever it is what it I is don't know. i might get a little offended you should know me better than that i'm not gonna <laughs> completely fucking shit on something that's that's you know come on i, well, I don't think i've ever been that far away on a, on a rating with anybody on a show like more than fucking like if they gave it an eight or higher i don't think i've ever come in there was, a, under a like there was a couple times lower. there was a couple times on this show where like i think i came in it like i remember there was one time i mean we started laughing so hard it was like me jeremy and, and, G, and, and what was it it was like someone gave something like an eight and a half and i was in like a four <laughs> or something it was just ridiculously <laughs> different man it was it so happens. fun and we started laughing because it was like the most ridiculously fucking spread out rating of all time but yeah so i feel like it was halloween it, it was yeah, which I'm actually. You get that a four, man. That's, that's no. <laughs> no Halloween 18. I think I gave six, but I don't like the movie though. I feel but, like I gave it a six. I, I give know. it. Uh, you guys don't like. I give it like a six and a half, seven. I can probably give it a seven. I just don't like that one Zar- Zartan guy. He sucked. I still. Oh, he's Loomis, you know, upon <laughs> upon Loomis. reviewing, uh, he Turkish sucked. Loomis is the worst part of that fucking movie. That dude, oh, he was so dude funny. just trying to ruin that movie every chance he gets. <laughs> right? It's just so fucking. St- it, it, it was. He was trying. He was trying hard. He was trying. <laughs> Everything else, I was like, this is pretty cool. And then he pops up. He's like, ah, yes. I was like, what is this shit? <laughs> Turkish Loomis. <laughs> Turkish Loomis sucks. That's him. Yep. <laughs> he took a, he took at least a full point off that movie. Oh man. Oh, but what about that scene when he puts on the mask? I, I haven't again. <laughs> Dude, hysterical Mars. Dude, everything about it was fucking hysterical. I haven't laughed that hard in a Halloween. Yeah, but Halloween, it's not supposed I'll to be funny though. It's not but supposed to be care. funny. That's but that's my kind of humor. Stuff that isn't supposed to be funny, but I find funny is probably the you best love Jacko. humor there is. Well, you know that's what like, I mean? That's like, like you unintentionally would funny, but. That's like me with dummy deaths. I'm oh, not supposed go. to be funny. And I'm sitting here fucking wiping tears away. <laughs> the best dummy death is zombie holocaust when the dude's arm falls off. Oh, my God. When he jump, Is that the one who jumps through the window? His arm falls off? Yeah, his arm fucking falls off. The dummy's arm falls off. Holocaust. You know what another so really it was, good... It was a goof. It was like a... The fuck yeah, yeah. Mannequin, no. the dummy. The arm falls off and they keep it in there. Right, right. You know, you know what another really good one I is, man? This. In actual, it's 1980. I'll be, I'll be rewatching oh. the movie for 1980, which is Terror Train. The the fucking dummy death scene in that film at the end of the movie is so fucking Doesn't funny. Doesn't Ben Johnson throw him out of the train? Yeah, but it, it, the way it lands in the pond, in the frozen pond, I fucking lose it every... It's just so phony looking. <laughs> it's fucking priceless, man. Oh, it's like, I, I never noticed this shit. I can't Fuck. wait to rewatch it for 80 because I have to watch it in December because it's like more of a holiday film. I guess it's like I liked Hair Train. Rewatching that was a treat. I was like, man, I just I wait. Agree. I agree with that. I am so lukewarm. I've always been lukewarm on the film, man. I I, I, I don't mind. I like it. Ben Johnson a lot. I don't mind it's it. It's fun, man. I don't I mind like it. this. The, it's like a perfect winter horror film for me. Yeah. But, but, but not like covered in you know what I mean like it New Year's I guess if it's a slash here and it doesn't fucking completely suck I'll probably like it yeah I'm yeah I mean insane. I don't dislike it you know I, I'm the same way with slashers man I, I get entertained by them very easy they're comfort food yeah okay That's so that sure. was uh, Don't Torture Duckling from 1972 just imagine how frightening it is to suddenly find that you can 
can see into the future. All right, so getting into the third and final film here on Falchi 3, episode 229, Gia. All right, so this one is from 1977, and it is called The Psychic, which is also the American title for it. I think the alternate title that's not the Italian one is Murder to the Tune of the Seven Black Notes, which I fucking love that title. That is like the most giallo title ever. Is it not? Murder to the There's Tune of the of... Seven Black Notes. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, it's better than the yeah, Tarantino actually used bits like of this score. Um, because it is what it is. I know Tarantino used bits of the score in this <laughs> film for um, Kill Bill and stuff like that. There's a couple scenes in Kill Bill that he uses it for. So. Does Kill Bill have any original music in it? I don't think so. No. <laughs> tons, man, tons. No, it's there's, by the Rizzo. There's he the one scene where Buck. I love Kill Bill. But I can't remember. I think it might even say. Oh, yeah. It might even say actually in the. Do you, oh, it, it does actually say. Oh no, never mind. Uh, no, it does say the 17th theme and Kill Bill one. So there's a couple scenes, a couple different ones, but. Actually, a little bit of trip before we get into this, uh, to speak on Tarantino. He actually was going to remake this movie in the early 90s um, with uh, Bridget Fonda, which I thought was kind of... It never materialized, hmm. though. Which I is, mean, good choice. Yeah, oh, that's what I said. But then he, used, he ended up using Bridget Fonda in, um, in Jackie Brown, right? So that's kind of cool. But anyways, Murder to the Tune of the Seven Black Notes, a.k.a. the Psychic. Synopsis. A clairvoyant woman discovers a skeleton in a wall in her husband's house and seeks to find the truth about what happened to the victim. All right. So we're going to go back a couple reviews and we kind of mentioned that like where don't torture a duckling ends off. This one kind of starts <laughs> <laughs> just with like a, a ridiculous dummy death. So our lead character here is played by Jennifer O'Neill. Um, yeah, she plays Virginia. And the movie starts out with like a basically a, a, a flashback to like, you know, 1959, which in this time would be about 18 years prior to basically her, her mom committing suicide. And yeah, and she, at, she's in a completely different oh, place. Oh, speaking on that, the little girl that plays Virginia in this film is actually the mentally handicapped girl from Don't Torture a Duckling. <laughs> she's just five years older. And it's the same you know who girl. Plays Sounds the, like Bob. You know who plays the mother? The wife in Cannibal Apocalypse, Elizabeth Turner. Oh, really? Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, that's what and, I love about this. There's so many connections. There's like six, so de- good at this. six degrees of fucking Italian filmmaking. And it's just ridiculous. There's so many people that are just, yeah. And you so, want to know what's really fucked up about this scene? Hmm. What? Lugio Fulci's wife killed herself in like 1969 because she had inoperable cancer. So this idea that this woman kills herself in the very beginning like that oh. is something that I think really resonated with him and oh. I think that's why this movie has a little bit of personal touches to you it know what? and I think he did work on the screenplay oh, I knew that Walt Fulci's wife had died when um, she, you know she a long, I didn't realize that she committed I didn't know that like, that's I why that's fucked up at the very beginning yeah, oh, that's crazy wow. I didn't even realize like I knew that she had died man that, that's fucked up okay that's really crazy um so basically the movie starts out with, yeah, yeah, you know, as a young child, she's witnessed her, her mom jump off a cliff and it, we have <laughs> kind of a Witnessing similar dummy death in her mind, in her mind. Anyways, she's driving back from the airport. She's just dropped her husband off there and she's going through this tunnel. And then she has this fucking vision of like somebody being ho- walled up in a hole, murdered and walled up in a hole and all this type of shit that's going on. Anyways. So she gets to this um, place that she's never been to. It's her husband's villa. Her, his house or whatever it's he's owned this place. she's a de- she's a decorate like a designer yeah. Yeah. decorator type thing so they've only been um, married for she's like, gonna fix up this villa yeah so they've only been married for like six months so she's actually never been here before and like you said she's a decorator so she goes there and then she kind of starts to investigate like she has this vision and she's like well this is the room and then she's recognizing all these similarities to this vision that she had so she basically takes a fucking pickaxe and, and holes out the wall and finds a fucking skeleton in this wall so now she tries to or now she takes upon herself to investigate what the fuck has happened here because this place was owned by her husband and then it kind of goes from there and there's all this and the police come in and and they're like well obviously you own this place there's a body in the wall yeah you probably killed her right and uh should point out the police detective is actually father thomas from 
City of Living Dead. Right. Recognize oh, them this time. Okay. Yeah, right. I but you guys should I listen would, to Troy Harworth's commentaries. So you guys should listen to the commentaries for Troy Harworth for Don't Torture Duckling and The Psychic. You know what, Dave? I was actually I was actually going to mention that, I was Dave. Like, Dave, didn't Dave used to rip the audio to listen as like podcasts for these? I was like, I need to start doing that. On the Blu-rays, it's a pain in the dick, so I don't do it. Uh, yeah, but yeah, because I I was looking at the back of the case, and I'm like, I love Hallworth's commentaries, and I feel like they, it would just add a lot to these movies to listen to like a historian talk about them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he wrote a book. I I, I should have read the chapters on the psychic and the, and the, all the chapters I have on the faulty book by him, Splintered Visions. I I, fuck, I forgot I was going to do that today, but I was really busy. Mm-hmm. You just did a Lindsay book. Sorry, I'm off track. No, no, it's cool. Um, no, but it's yeah, I, it's so the setup to this one's very unique. It's pretty interesting. Um, very, very supernatural esque, you know, with the with the visions, the psychic visions, and uh, this one had me guessing too because I'm like, okay, wonder what is like who. You know, it, it, I think it's well done as well in terms I, of narrative. Um, th- this like, one, it's a good companion piece. It's a good companion piece with um, with Lizard a little bit. You know, it's dealing with like mm-hmm. you know men- mental stuff, mentality. You know, kind of dreams, visions, and premonitions, things like that. You know, it's very very similar. You can tell again, this has kind of got Fulci all over it and stuff. But you're right though. But I think this one has a lot of really cool. Um, kind of reveals in the film like there's all these little anecdotes with magazines and pictures and who's on there and and you know where the pictures were cropped from and like there's so many little things that are in this film like you really kind of have to pay attention now in my opinion this one right here is the the one i like the least out of these three i really do still like this film i really like the music in this film it's great and some of the, some of the visions and stuff are really cool um you know, every time I watch this movie, which is funny because I just rewatched this like six months ago and I always get this whole thing because like I always get this kind of Edgar Allan Poe, like black cat type feel with, you know, being walled up in the hole and stuff like that. And of course, Fulci, exactly. And then Fulci ends up doing yeah. the black cat a couple the years after cat. this, like in 1980. And I was just like, it's like he did this movie, which obviously is not based on Poe, but it has those similarities to the black cat. And then he goes and does yeah. it and stuff. So, you know, I always kind of feel like this is the black cat, but it's nothing like that. It's totally different. But I think there's, I think the narrative in here for a maybe a first time watch because i remember watching this film years ago when when severin put out the dvd and i was like whoa did i miss something am i missing some things here like it took me a second watch to fully grasp because i was confused a little bit on the visions and you know the permanent but like watching it again i'm like how was i confused you know it's just but that's the well, that's the thing with italian films sometimes if you miss little antidotes in films you could be missing a big part of the, the narrative in the picture right which we've touched on. I had the same problem. With it. Yeah. And, but I, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Like the first time I watched this, I, the first like half the movie, I was like, well, I don't fucking. And then it connected at the end. And I was like, when I started realizing, yeah. I started realizing when she started realizing what was happening, I was like, Oh my God, that's horrifying. And well, then the Mark Porl says the line, you did not see something that had already happened. What you saw was something yet to come. And you're I like, oh my that. God, I'm it's like, dude, it's, the the oh, it's terrifying. That's what I'm referring yeah. to. The that's end. my like, favorite that, part of the movie. That line right I there. I didn't see that shit coming. Right, all. because everything yeah. that's yeah. happening, yep. you're like, oh, what the, f-? and then, then that's, re- but, and that's all because of the magazine. And I love that. But at the same time, because he figures the, the it reason out. it works so well is because the whole time you're thinking like, well, this doesn't make sense because like, it doesn't look like, and you, then you're thinking, is it unreliable, like, remembering the dream? And well, That guy didn't have a beard at the time. He has a mustache. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, the limp and, like, all this stuff. And yeah. you're like, wow, like, this actually, like, works out fucking well, great. So the one part, and uh, going back to when I first watched this film, okay, so she has this vision of this old lady being murdered, which she thinks is the one inside the wall. So when I finished the film the first time, I was like, who the fuck was the old lady that was that that was murdered? She had this vision of it and shit <laughs> like that. I couldn't even, like after I was on the film, I couldn't like for the life figure out who the fuck she was. But then, you know, when you rewatch, you're like, oh, OK, so there's this whole backstory, you know, with all these characters and why she was murdered and stuff. Having the to do with the, shit. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, she with the paintings and she was involved and they were all involved in this thing. Anyway, she ends up getting murdered, blah, blah, blah. So then I like, but those are the things that just the dots started connecting the second time. I was like, oh my God, that's so brilliant. But this movie actually is written pretty well. Like if you go back and you watch it for what it is and all these little things and how they reveal, you know, certain elements of, um, 
you know, in the narrative, you're like, oh, fuck, man. It's actually pretty cool. It's cool. I just feel like this I was one's a little actually, bit slower. I was actually, like, really invested in this one. Like, I, I mean, I was, like, thinking about it the entire time I was watching it, yeah. trying to figure out what was going on. It just, this one really worked for me. I know that a lot of people would consider the other two a lot better. Uh, I still think this one's really good. I just like the fact that this one all wraps up and it makes sense, right? Because this one is one of those films, like, I think if it left it a little bit ambiguous at the end, it would be, you would just have this overwhelming it feeling of being... It almost kind of does leave, it, leave it, There's something that's left a little ambiguous at the end. Oh, well, no, I think... That, oh, yeah, yeah. That part right there, again, just screams Poe. It fucking yeah, screams sure. Poe. It totally yeah, screams Poe. hard. Total, 100%. That's, like, I love that about it. I think that's actually kind of brilliant because, you know, it's, you know, you really don't expect that to be there at all. I think it's fucking uh, I also like the casting of the husband as, as Gianni Garco, who played Sartana, because you don't, he, he's really, it's really weird that he's this character in there, right? Right. It's just like in that type of, you wouldn't, cat you wouldn't really cast him in this type but it works because he comes across as a fucking weirdo to me <laughs> right yeah yeah and it's it's a weird reveal like the movie's fun because you, you get the point in kind of like the remake of the ring i feel like it's similar to that where you you get to see all the little premonitions and and the parts come to fruition you get to see each scene and every time you see more of the the premonition you realize you're closer to your your own fate which is scary in, in which movie yeah in the ring Oh right, right, yeah, 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 and I, I and yeah. I, and I really, I mean, I really do think because, like I said, I watched this movie again about six months ago, and I'm rewatching it today, or last <laughs> night, and I was like, everything just completely made sense to me, like everything, and I was like, wow, this is actually a really well put together movie. Like, there's really not a lot of convolution in this in this narrative, which, again, Dave, is this your first time watching this? Z. Yes, it is. Were, were you having problems falling? Did you fall out of this one drastically? Because I can totally see if you did fall out of this one and kind of lost interest a little bit because it does seem like it's a little bit slower in its approach uh, with the investigation and stuff like that. And there's just a lot of little anecdotes, a lot of little pieces you got to put together to complete the puzzle in the end. I can kind of see that. I, I really can. So what are your thoughts on this one? Th- this is weird because, um, you know, earlier the beginning of the show you asked me if um when i was talking about the gates of hell trilogy as compared to the you know the uh the jolly uh, done by fulci right. if it's a personal preference because i happen to like supernatural something uh, over you know this type of murder investigation and now that i think about it the answer to that isn't my preference it's my preference of what i think are better fulci movies i prefer his supernatural stuff and what i enjoyed about this movie was it had that element in it all the way down to the score even this was my favorite score of it all this who did this one i score. i didn't write it down i don't know usually i do when i'm impressed but this time uh, i didn't I think but it's, i really I, enjoyed I think it's it riz. i think it's riz olani or lani is it riz riz or lani i'll check on this one i, I actually don't remember this one i actually and i was can't. having trouble I'll say that, but because there was a supernatural element, it managed to keep me engaged because it was easier to follow. All I knew is that she had these visions and what was going on, and that was easy enough for me to say, okay, I don't care so much about what's going on with the husband and everything else. I just want to see what's up with the visions. I want to see the end result. So so that kept me in. Now, this is what's weird. This is there's a little bit of a story to this. I couldn't find this movie anywhere. I was supposed to get it added somewhere. I didn't. I don't own the damn physical. That's, take a lesson, kids. Buy the freaking physical. It's actually, but I didn't have Scorpion enough time. released the Blu-ray of this, which we talked about earlier yeah. with Scorpion and Code Red. Well, there you go. I, I wish I would have had. But again, I, I only found out I was doing the show. It's an week ago, and I wasn't about to blind buy. It, it just sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. Right. But mm-hmm. in this case, I didn't. No, it's not. And I, fi- I, fi- I finally found a place to get it, and it was through Fandor, through Prime. Here's the only problem. No subtitles. 
and I'm a subtitle junkie. I use them for everything. Okay. And so here's I watched the, the can I just can I just interview? Can I just Fabio I Frizzi did the music for yeah, no, Fabio I, Frizzi. As soon as okay. soon as I looked it up, oh. I was like, oh yeah, it is Fabio Frizzi. I totally for, I just take wow. a stab. So he's got like, his three best composers of all time. <laughs> right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Fal- you got has, Enyo, Riz, and Fabio. I know. Amazing. He has the best music. But anyways, so let me interview in for one second here. Well, JP watched the English version because this movie was shot in English. <laughs> it's like completely right. done. That's why that's right. So it actually, English, a- yes. actually, all three of these movies were shot in English. All three of them were. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, um, speaking of the subtitles on the Scorpion Blu-ray, so I watch a lot of the, like if there is a lot of heavy accents, like there's a lot of heavy Italian accents cool. and stuff in this movie. I'll say. So I will throw in the subtitles quite often. That's a mistake. This subtitles are the worst I've match. ever no, seen no, no, no. in a movie it's ever. Not that they're the worst moods. They don't Those match, right? subtitles are for the italian, italian version track. yes i figured that yep. i figured that so when you're watching it on the english version you, basically what you're hearing in english you're not reading it's totally right. fucking no, different it's slightly different like they'll have synonyms for words yep. you know and there's lines it's the same complete- thing with lizard yeah there's, there's the same thing when i watch yep. lizard I, 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 I there was two different options for subtitles and neither of them matched. And I've seen this before on other Italian films, and, and I don't understand why, but I just go with it. But as long as I can get the basic, the gist of it, I'm fine. But what happened here was, because there were no subtitles, like you were saying, Moods, and I'm Italian, but still, and I've been around people <laughs> who speak Italian, but still, these accents, they're speaking English. There were about three or four characters in this movie mm-hmm. that I legit, no lie, can say I only understood 50% of what they were saying. Yeah. So It's hard. It, thing i can do so what i did was i alluded to it earlier i was getting lost and i think that uh, that's why and then i took care of myself a little bit to take the edge off with it and just just kind of go with it and then i did the the smartest thing which i sometimes do i went over to wikipedia and i read the plot that's let me a tell very you. good tactic right there if but you're ever some, like slight yeah. especially if somebody good wrote the description right you know what's funny Dude, you know what's so funny about, about 10 paragraphs it you know, just goes to show you how much is going on in this fucking movie. You know I'm what? Reading and reading and reading. Oh my god! I I've had that but happen I, to me every once in a while. With it. I've had that happen before, where like you watch a movie and you're like, you just want to refresh yourself, you know, just read the fucking in Wikipedia. There's like no description. It's funny because these three have literally everything, like every scene written down for all like they're the longest fucking it's the whole movie written down i'm like holy shit that's crazy it's fucking right it's a book yeah it's they're totally well, books man I think totally they, books but this one oh man but it helped me right usually I, I, like the next day i'll read the wikipedia page just to sort of refresh and put everything in like sequence of when it happened and stuff yeah. like that well, it's nice to and get then it like helps me with the show especially because we've talked about this before when you when you review multiple giallos and they're all kind of similar in structure like you know they they're, run together bro. sometimes yeah, you, you get too. things that are a little bit mixed up right and you're like oh did that happen in that i can't remember like this is why we when we did the saw franchise we fucking watched a movie and reviewed oh, it God. all separately we couldn't do the whole show together because it was like that would be virtually impossible is every movie is like Dude, the fucking it literally would have it just everything bleeds together it, everything bleeds together you'd be like we would have been we would have sound like fucking idiots on that one but <laughs> well, this one was different this is what the other two had a, had a similar tone as you know Gialli, but this one had the, a little something extra going for it with with the supernatural unfortunately we had all that good stuff, and I love that one scary red lamp scene and all that. There's some trippy stuff going on, mm-hmm. and the woman is just absolutely stunning. So that doesn't hurt either. I'm Jennifer O'Neill, you know, the lead girl here. Jennifer Madonna. O'Neill, yeah. So yeah, yeah she's awesome. so her, and, and then then I'm waiting to see the girl on the cover of the magazine. And let me tell you, the girl on the cover of the magazine looks a hundred percent like Britney Spears if she had a black wig. I, I couldn't get over it. I kept seeing Britney Spears. It was nuts. And I'm like, are we going to see this freaking Britney girl? Which we don't, but whatever. But I'm into the movie. Problem is this. It's like I said with some of the other stuff in the, in the accent. So I just went along with it and I was reading and it was helping. Problem is this. There's so much. There's a lot of positives to it. And I like the supernatural element and everything else. But does anybody get killed in this movie? Uh, outside of what we see in the freaking somebody in the thing? Like, there's no murders in a movie like this where usually in Italian movies, there's murders. <laughs> no, because I don't think anybody it, gets killed in this Because movie. this one's all based on visions and memories and premonitions and stuff. Yeah. So there's actual no real time, if you want to call it that. <laughs> right. Murders. Fair. Yeah. yeah. 
weird. That, ah, honestly, how many horror movies don't have your, a? Uh... <laughs> but again, yeah. but again, it's you know, it's it's faulty again. You know, it's it's done differently. It's not your standardized, you know, A to B fucking you know, Gialli, right? Like all three of these are kind of different, right? And yeah, that's and why. And you know what's funny is like the killer in one is like the opposite of like the other. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. That that's kind of the the. the one and three. <laughs> well, let me. Get, I mean, it would have been funny if we did Perversion Story too, because the first one has John Surreal in it, and yeah. then and then and then we have uh, Lizard has John Surreal and and for the Balkan, and then for the Balkans in Lizard and Don't Torture a Duckling, but Mark Porles in Don't Torture a Duckling and the Psychic. So it would have been a chain right there. I know it's like every two films, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I know. What, it, what it, did you, th- Parker? What what did I? What did you? Do you like this movie a lot? Yeah, like I mentioned, I just like the basic reveal of it and the structure I think is pretty brilliant that she has the the vision, but then you realize the vision is actually a premonition and throughout the entire movie you get bits and bits and pieces until she gets closer to her fate. It's actually very scary. Um, somebody... I- <laughs> but you don't you know i was listening to a review of it today they compared it to don't look now and i can definitely see that oh, so right. like i think it's a really smart movie I, I think it's really well done i think it's creepy i think it's uh i, I just like it i think i actually think i like this one second best to be honest and you know, I, I don't know why i don't think it's as unique as lizard but i just like it i i actually when i watched this one again you know six months ago <clears throat> i started thinking about it after i watched it and i was like man it's kind of funny, like, and I'm sure you guys maybe thought of this or maybe not, but, you know, to once you realize that you're actually having a premonition, it's not actually just a vision. So with that note, you essentially are seeing something that's, you know, going to be fatal, potentially. But the yeah. end result is still not good, <laughs> right? Because, you know, if you kind of look at the situation, you're like, well... You know, you knew a little bit ahead of time, but this still didn't work out in your favor. Like you're either you're really dumb, maybe. I don't know. Like, it's just kind of funny when you put not, that on that main character. But, but but in a sense, though, like you've it's not the first time Fulci did that either. I mean, it is before he does it later in House uh, Bonza Cemetery because the kid sees the painting that tells him not to come there and then by the time you know they realize they're there you know it's too late it's a very common trope oh, in, in yeah. gothic horror too. if you look at crimson peak you know she was told beware crimson peak but by the time she gets where she's at and she realizes this place is called crimson peak you're already fucking there right. so it's just the idea it just actually makes it worse to be honest right <laughs> because right. they just well, let you be prepared you're, you just scare yourself the, the, yeah, difference, right. the difference like, is with that's not a good with, like virginia in this Morning. movie though like she's an adult verse you know a child in that i mean i could see the difference in that too but like, you mean crimson peak is the same similarity right you got you got some true. of the puzzle true. but you don't have everything enough to stop it she she that's the worst that's the worst that's like being a detective trying to figure out a crime where you have everything but you just can't see it correctly i, I just kind of see it as like you know you see that shit in slow-mo you see like the match truck going you know slow-mo head on yeah. against the fucking gasoline truck kind of thing right it's like oh uh, you know but also i like it because it's a mystery you know you right. get to solve the solve it and, yeah, and i was trying to figure stuff. that shit out hard yeah. that's kind of like i said that i always bring up no roy it's, there's a mystery mm-hmm. behind it that's yeah. why it's so and the japanese a lot of the ghost stories there's a mystery so you follow yeah. them and you enjoy them you know that's the, that's the whole part of it and i think that a, some of the italian films are the same way that's why they're kind of adult horror those yeah. japanese ghost stories and these kind of jolly or or supernatural gothic things they're adult horror films you know right. there's a mystery right. to it Definitely yeah there, there's a lot of films. really good anecdotes and reveals in this too like i think some of the, my favorite shit is obviously when it's revealed that you know it's premonition and shit like that with the magazine but like there's a lot of little things to do with you know the horse races and stuff how it was supposed to be the 10 year and then no it was actually the nine year and the guy writes the one and then for the roman numerals and there, there's a lot of shit to do with that picture of that girl and stuff that's really cool and so i i find that stuff is very fascinating how it was written and stuff i think it's really good i, I, I also really like the lead trying to like she feels like a good girl you know she's like trying to prove her husband's like innocent and shit like that like any wife would really right well, well usually, and that's similar to the perversion story too right movie. the it's only usually thing usually i don't <laughs> really like i mean i get it like she's only been married for like six months and stuff like that and like the guy fully admits like he's had this place for years and stuff and he obviously was the owner of the place and he you know they he admits and they and they find out that he was dating this girl and stuff like 
you know, to be honest, I watch a lot of fucking Dateline, and when you know, husband, but when the significant ever get ever gets murdered, what goes missing, whatever, it's usually the partner that does. It's it. almost always. It's all. It's always. like ninety eight percent. But like when you look at this, the core part of the narrative with this girl in the wall and stuff, and he dated her, and she went missing, and it's his house and stuff. It's like really, <sighs> they should have just figured it out back in those days. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest like i don't know i just i, I think that's kind of ridiculous yeah, but in, that's, in a, a, that's actually a very fair point right yeah because there's not really a lot of mystery to that right it's he she was in the fucking house that he owned so yeah but then again you don't know that she's dead i she mean could I, just be missing true it's true but you have to look at the the significant other which they were just dating absolutely were married, right absolutely. You, you know you kind of kind of look into that situation but you know whatever i mean it's not 100 percent perfect but uh i do really think that this one doesn't have a lot of flaws within the reveals like there's all these little things that, great dude you know i love i love the the letter and i love how the old lady like th- that vision of her being dead and like how that's revealed into it and how there's this whole core with you know they're basically criminals <laughs> they're fucking mm-hmm. criminals man like there's a lot of things that are going on in this that like it's very interesting i think it's a very good narrative and i i, I think it's um and the end result to me is very satisfying because like i said it has this poe thing to going for it that i really enjoy and i think it's uh i think it's like going against the grain I guess in a sense, because you really want to root for her. You really do. Because she's a very likable character. She's very yeah, rootable. I, I, I really like her. And I think well. that's why the ending works so damn well in the film, too. So, yeah, I, I, it's it's good. It's good. Actually, when you pop in the Blu ray, it doesn't come up as the psychic. It, it comes up as murder to the tone of the, the tune of the seven black notes, which is cool. <laughs> yeah. That's a great Dave thing. Z, did you, did you have anything to say about it? And I feel like you didn't get to say much. Um, no, I thought it was interesting that they did the same trick at the start as the one. So that was kind of like, wow, why yeah. are you doing that? But whatever. It was just unusual to see. There was some funny dialogue from the stuff I could actually understand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that one girl saying, I've had 56 lovers. Right? That one lady, she was great. Yeah. I thought that um, <clears throat> the premonition, great reveal, and, and great reveal at the very end, and then the clue, if you will, at the end. And the score, I loved it. I uh, the um, did anyone else think dude looked a lot like the guy that Argeno uses in his movies, and he usually plays gay men in Argeno's movies. The um, the lawyer, I guess he was the attorney. Um, what the hell was his position in this movie? I don't know. He was the guy that was always around that was that was talking, you know, the main guy that was looking for the husband along with the wife. The oh, that cat. Oh, the the parasy- his- the parapsychologist. <laughs> Was that what he was, a psychologist? No, okay. no. Oh, you're talking about Mark Porl, the guy who's the priest in the last movie, or are you talking about the lawyer? No, he's an older guy. He's an attorney. Him, yeah. Did, I'll look did, him up. Didn't he look I, like the one guy from the general movies, That the one guy that owns the uh, the shop, and then, then he's the detective in the other movie, you know, where he acts very uh, openly gay? You know what I'm talking about, right? The guy in our general movies? There's yeah. a lot of those guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but it's the same guy. He's done it twice. Didn't Mark Pearl die? I, I want to really see like... the one guy's in Bird. Yeah. He sells him the painting. Yeah, and the then... very. Yeah. I remember, that. I remember that guy. Right, right. I thought it was him. I had to, I was getting distracted, and then I started looking on IMDb, and then I couldn't find him. Yeah, he fucking died really young, that guy. Shit, Kept man. He died when he was like I've... 34, Mark Pearl. Which guy? Uh, Mark Pearl. The guy, the priest from Duckland. Yeah, he died when he was like 34. It's crazy. They did not get along oh. this movie at all. No? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. He He's also in Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man, the Reggio Diodata movie, and he did not get along at all with uh, Lucio Fulci on this movie. Huh. Damn. He's trouble, huh? Yeah, I've seen well, he was Live fucking like, a on cop, like a Cop. I can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember it from the movie, but <clears throat> I've seen it, though. And apparently not good drugs. I mean, he was the, him and Ray Lovelock were the stars of that one. Mm-hmm. Damn. I, mean, well, I like the movie. But, you know, I just I feel something is missing. But there's there's other there's aspects of this film that I enjoyed more than the other two, with like the, the supernatural stuff and the score okay. and things like that. But in the same you know in the same breath, there's something missing. I mean, besides obviously <laughs> murders, there's just something 
You know what I mean? I'm like, maybe if they could have t- thrown some additional thing in there and maybe cut out a little bit of the dialogue with her wondering about her husband and just had that one scene instead of three and then added a couple of kills for some other reason. Maybe it could have been, you know, overall better. But but I dig it. Again, I've never seen a Fulci movie that I haven't liked. Uh, I haven't seen all of them. I haven't seen Cat in the Brain. I haven't seen that. There's some. Here's what I've seen. You uh, might like Cat in the Brain. You wouldn't like when we start getting in shit like fucking like Solomon's Ghost or whatever the fuck it is. You, ah, uh, <laughs> which I honestly, man, right. the yeah. only Fulci movie I don't really care for. It's actually not even a horror film or a Jolly or whatever. It's uh, called The Eroticist. Um, I think it was done the same year as Duckling, and I think it was '72. It's it's basically a political satire, so it's a comedy. It's like a cop. And it's like it doesn't translate. For, first it. of all, first of all, I I can't. Yeah, I don't want to watch Italian comedy from the seventies. That's I, just a lot. I actually can't stand political satires because I'm, I'm not really. I don't really like politics that much. But like political satires are so like there is funny moments in it for sure. But some of the comedy definitely works better if you're like Italian, right? If you're from that region, that yeah. would totally makes more sense. It just translates better for you. So I, I find it kind of a slug to get through. But but as for like his other genre films, like there's not really anything that I have a disdain for so or distaste for so conquest is awesome oh, I conquest, think conquest is probably my favorite great. i love conquest man it has right? the craziest atmosphere i've only seen to it. it once it blew me away it's i just, want to watch it again with like a crowd it's so i think i might have just picked that up it's so have dreamy. you seen contraband dave oh. you seen contraband, contraband? i don't think so is it his italian euro crime oh, wait a minute maybe i did i, I think i watched gore. oh wait yeah, it's it's nasty. It's it, good. It's got some. It's is that the one Cauldron just yeah. released? Yeah, yeah. I just rewatched. You got to get it. It's, it's 1982. It's fucking awesome. It's a, it's a mob movie, man. Yeah, it's good. Oh wait, I saw that one. That I saw cool. Contraband. Yeah. 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 It was fine. We did. I did. We did three of them. We did three Fulci movies that weren't horror. Um, and you just four of the Ed. Apocalypse is the other one, right? That one's great yeah. too. Correct. Four of the Apocalypse, Contraband, and the and Conquest. They're and all good. Yeah, they were all good. Conquest just has a special place in my heart. Oh, I've only seen it once, but man. It's so weird. I don't know. Yeah, dude, it was fun. It's sword and sorcery but, with like so, Fulci So far, Fulci awesome. hasn't let me down. Yes, it has the All three of those right. movies have nasty shit in them. Man, I was looking. I have 29 Fulci movies logged in my IMDb, or in, in my uh, letterbox. Wow. The only Fulci yeah. film like from his major, like I haven't seen is Silver Saddle, the, the other Western. Which I love, Masker Time, and I love for the Apocalypse. So I've never seen. Do you see those white fang ones? No. <laughs> yeah, I've never. I don't. No, I haven't seen those two. But uh, yeah, those are weird ones. It's kind of like in between these movies. Pulses log. It's like right in between all these these movies that we're just watching right now. The white fang films is so strange. <laughs> but, <laughs> I know, uh, right? Yeah, it is very odd. But yeah, I, I, I hope Silver Saddle gets a fucking blu-ray like a region one. i know it had a german release a couple years back but it went out of print so quick I, like i missed out on it i would have grabbed it but i don't know i haven't heard anything do you know anything dave is, is that coming out in region one or getting another release or i something? have a blu-ray from overseas yeah the german one Saturday. never yeah. did watch it though i know i fucking forgot like i it came out i forgot to order it and i went to go order one and it was like out of print i'm like what the fuck <laughs> like it just just got released it's fucking german releases man they go out of print so quick sometimes but i have I have 13 Fulci's logged, but I liked all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Are we good on ratings? Yeah, I yep. guess we might as well get into ratings on this one without... This one is kind of a tough one to talk about, man. Because I feel like you just start saying certain things, you're just going to give everything away. I don't know. We probably give most of it away anyways. But <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Parka, you're up. Uh, I'm going to give it an eight. eight. I am exactly I like it quite a bit. I'm exactly in an eight too. So we pretty much lined up exactly today. Um, yeah, eight out of ten for myself. I think it's solid. Uh, really, I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, it's just, I, it's just the less of the three for myself, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Something has to come in last, right? Um, Dave Z. Dave Z. All right. I guess going along with the theme of the whole show, you guys gave it an eight. I gave it a seven. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm probably coming in at the highest on this one. Uh, I think I like this one just as much as Lizard. Um, I give it 8.5. Wow. Nice, man. Hmm. A little bit surprised about that, actually. Higher. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, the, the I watched all three of these movies last night. Me too. All three of them. Back, back, and, to back. 
they just hit for me, dude. Like I, I was, I was into all three of them, mm-hmm. and well, I had seen the first two before. This, I think, I, I think also <coughs> seeing the the psychic for the first time really like worked for me too, because I was so interested in the damn in, in the narrative. I just wanted, I was trying to figure it out the whole time, and it just clicked it by the end. Oh, I never even asked you this. So this was your first time watch, crazy, huh? Yeah, this well, one. It, I it clicked for you too. better than the first time I watched it. Because like I said, it was years ago on the DVD. And I was like, after the fact, I, was, I had more questions than I had fucking answers. I was like, what did I? That's what I'm saying. I, dude, I felt dude, stupid like, when I watched I it. I was feel... like, and it never happens to me where I'm like so lost in something. And I'm like, what the? Like, I don't know what was going on that night. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention fully. I don't know. But rewatching, I was like, can I get this completely? I don't really <laughs> get what I was missing. I don't know what the fuck. I guess we have those days, right? So Right. I- I feel like I'm just starting to. I feel like they're clicking for me better than they ever have the the uh, giallos. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to. I know we have color uh, all the colors of the dark, which I wasn't like overly loved that one when I seen it the first time. So I'm really looking forward to rewatching that one. Are we doing them uh, Lindsay next week? Yeah, Lindsay's next week. I got yeah, a bunch of other Lindsay films. I'm just gonna rewatch next week and stuff, and just things that yeah, you know, like my Lindsay. I have like. I must have like over twenty fucking Lindsay movies logged too. It's crazy. I love me some Lindsay. I know. I feel like watching. I feel like watching a bunch of Fauci now. <laughs> like I, I, I had a lot of fun with this. I watched. Like I said, I, I rewatched. Like I did. Um, I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to get out of here, guys. Yeah, yeah. It's. So I'm gonna dip. All right. All right, man. Chick you later. Oh yeah, it's exactly eight o'clock. This guy's re- you're you're so fucking. <laughs> you're right on time, dude. Gotta wrap yeah. it up. So punctual. I got bronchitis. I ain't trying to be on here all night. I gotta go to sleep. All right, later, bro. Right. See you guys. All right, man. Later, bro. Take care. Yeah, I finished off last night. I watched the three Giallis, and I was like, well, I need a kind of a mix up here. So I watched Corbucci's uh, The Mercenary, you know, the western with uh, Franco Nero and stuff. Jack Palance is in that film. Uh, it's fucking good, man. I mean, anything with Sergio Corbucci, if you see the name Corbucci that Western wise, it's amazing. Like crazy fucking shootouts and stuff. It's awesome too, because you know, Corbucci did Django, right? And of course, Franco Nero was Django. And uh, there's a couple mm-hmm. shout outs in this film from Django. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool how he did it. Oh, it's fucking I fun. started watching Fall Chief for Fake. I was like 15 minutes into it. Yeah, I, I was like, what is this? <laughs> getting back to the Fall Chief. I actually did rewatch a couple. Like I like I said, I rewatched uh, Perversion Story and then I watched um, The Eroticist, which I still don't like. Um, and then I rewatched Cat in the Brain because I hadn't seen it in, since. I hadn't watched Cat in the Brain like a few years. I haven't seen that since we did the show. Now, Dave Z, like, oh, I guess I don't have to call you Dave Z. Dave left. Um, but, uh, <laughs> right. but Cat in the Brain is is it's kind of one of those films where Fulci plays the lead in it and it's weird, weird. It, right it, no it's cool because it's like it's totally a movie only Fulci could do because you know the, the second half of his career was based off of like really bloody and gory and violent films and stuff and that's the whole premise of the film it's about Fulci making a new movie but then dealing with the repercussions of you know his past you know so everything that he see like he's making all these violent movies and shit and it's basically discussing it, it's making him disgusted in real life right it's kind of a cool premise like you can only do wow. this type of film when you come from this type of background it's kind of a cool idea it's cool i think it's kind of cool but the, the funny thing about the film is that they he slices in quite a few scenes from his other films and some of the films that he actually produced and stuff for other directors and stuff so yeah. you get to see some of the gore scenes that's what it was but that's yep. what you guys covered this correct yep. right, we right. Covered that's it. how i know yeah. okay <laughs> yeah so but it, but it makes sense like right. some people are like oh it's so cheap they use all these other scenes and stuff but you kind of had to showcase that because that's part of the narrative because he did these films. I mean, it films, definitely right? feels like a cheaper movie, but it's interesting yeah. for being a cheap movie. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a very unique idea, right? Because, like, how many other directors have done something like this, right? I mean, it's faulty yeah, being faulty. Very, very unique. <laughs> it is very unique, yeah. yeah. I, it, it, you know, yeah. it's not everyone's favorite. It's probably not even Fulci's. And it's kind of funny because he felt like he was such a weak, weak actor with his w- with his dialogue that he got someone to, you know, even dub his own. Well, in every movie that he ever appeared in, he, he got someone else to dub his own voice. But he was so self-conscious about speaking on camera that he got someone to just dub his voice. Funny. <laughs> so he didn't even do his own dubbing. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. Um, but anyways, that is going to be or conclude episode 229 Fulci 3 first week here on Italian Hormone Dave thank you for coming back to the show of course you're welcome back anytime since you are one Always of the happy to be most here. beloved extended family members you know you're the one with the flavor so 
All right. Right um, back at you, brothers. And honestly, Dave, uh, you probably are approaching, if not surpass the – uh, if we take Dave Parker out of the equation for most featured guest, nice. I feel you have oh, to. Oh, he's, he's got to be up there. Well, if not now, I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be there by the end of uh, the 1980 show. Yeah, yeah, because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Derek was the reigning champ before that, but I'm pretty sure you were close to him already, and I know you've guessed it a couple more times recently. Mm-hmm. Nice. I'm going to look into this. I'm curious. Yeah, we should. <laughs> I'm curious now, too. Didn't we actually yeah. break it down one time? Sweet. We actually broke down. All, we had like yeah. something like over 20 I, different guests on this. It's probably more now. It's probably like 25 or 10. Yeah, it's and I way did more. tallies for each episode that someone guested on. And yeah. I believe that Dave Z was number two didn't, back then. Didn't Kyle come in pretty? Like he'd been on like six or Kyle seven shows? Kyle was like, yeah, Kyle, Kyle's been on a He's definitely probably third, and that was a long. Like he hasn't he's been on a show for, for a bit. Yeah, he hasn't been on forever. But there was a there was a time where he was on a bunch. There, it's kind of funny. Yeah, I know. Like even like fucking Merriman's been on a few. Like fucking Venom. Like, yeah, Merriman's up there. Yeah, yeah Merriman's probably seat. honestly like the fourth most featured guest. I'm trying to. Think. Yeah, but if you count how many hours he was actually awake. Maybe he'd go down a few, <laughs> you know, a few notches. <laughs> he, he, he probably wasn't yeah. even awake 10% of the time, man. 10% of the time. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on the movie, Mike? Well, I pretty much agree with moods. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Dude, that classic yep. shit, man. Oh, awesome. my God. It's so funny. Uh, whatever, Mike. We love but, you. Uh, but yeah, uh, anyway. He's never going to hear this anyways. He doesn't listen to the show. So. Um, all right, yeah, so that's going to conclude yeah, the episode. Yeah, he'll always ask me when the next 22 shots is coming out, and I'm like, dude, you don't fucking listen anyway. No, I know. He always does that, man. <laughs> he always does that that's shit. Funny. So um, so next week, yeah, is uh, Umberto Lenzi 2? It's only the second time we did yes. Lenzi, right? Yeah, Umberto so, Lenzi 2. So Lenzi 2, which I guess is pretty much... The fuck, what films are we doing? We're doing Eyeball. Eyeball. Which which one was it called? Which what? I don't which re- house? No. No, which... no, we're not doing any of those ones. No, I'm probably actually going to rewatch what? those. I'm probably going to rewatch. Yeah, no, we're definitely Ghost House. No, no, we're doing. Go- oh, I thought you said Witch House. <laughs> ha! Ghost House. I did huh? say Witch House, but I couldn't remember the title. Oh, okay. Of well, the... no, because he has another one that's like actually there is a Witch House in the title of it. But, I know. <laughs> uh, Eyeball, Ghost House, and I don't know. We have written. I can't remember. Fuck. Whatever. I think there's another Giallo oh, in there. So uh, wait, you're watching Blitz Ghost Orca. House? Oh, Seven, Bl- Seven Blitz and Orca. Exactly. So there's two Giallos and then Ghost House, which is, you know, supernatural shit. So cool. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Ghost they're... House, man. Be aware get, get to that one fucking thing. Uh, Every time they go to that one scene and I've there's a recording the and it says fucking a rock, a bear. <laughs> what the fuck are they saying? Me and my friends have been laughing about this for fucking 35 years. Dude. That fucking movie just because of that. There's fucking so thing. much repetitive A-Rock, stuff in that movie, like in the bear. score and shit like that. There's so many. I love Ghost House is one of those like cheesy fucking movies that I just always always got entertained by man i even have a ghost house shirt actually yeah. i've seen <laughs> both of these except for i i haven't seen eyeball yeah so I know. again just one parker hasn't seen eyeball seen. either i think that's why he won i actually hasn't seen Blood no, he hasn't scene. seen all three of these. oh he hasn't seen all three that's crazy man fuck yeah i know i've seen two of them it's not normal for me to have seen more of the films than dave yeah <laughs> interesting well, when you guys eyeball. watch ghost yeah, I'm curious to see what he thinks of eyeball because your interpretation of what they're saying after every murder, when you hear that that thing play and the music play, and there's a voice saying something. Please give me your your interpretations of what they are saying because it's been uh, it's been plaguing us for like I said, like 35 years. All right, yeah, I'll <laughs> right, try. I'll dude. try. I think I've tried to figure it out before, but I have to rewatch it to to get my exact thoughts on it. So okay. All right. Yeah, there's so, no subtitles, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think they would. They probably wouldn't even title that in there, anyways. It's probably just meant to be a mystery. They're fucking Whisper. with people. They're fucking with people. It's like, ah, they're going to be talking about this shit right. for 35 years, man. That's <laughs> true. We've been, ta- we've been calling this movie fucking a rock, a bear for fucking 35 years. We don't call it Ghost House. That's the movie we talk about. Let's watch a rock, a bear tonight. Okay, we watch it like three times oh, in our lives. Yeah. God, that's funny. That's funny. All right, guys, we're out of here. We'll check you next week. Deuces. Later. Thanks.
Thank <laughs> you.